You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. Hey, we go. Put the fucking fire out. We are back. <laughs> Getting Salty Experience Podcast. He's in rare form tonight, man. It's limited monetiz- limited monetization on your YouTube uh, video it, tonight. It's the only podcast in the whole wide world that brings the Firehouse Kitchen Table to you. Thank you. Self-proclaimed best podcast in the entire universe. Hey, Ruff, oh. what's going on, buddy? What's up? I'm you just hoping that the, our guest. I'm just hoping our guest is uh, still there when we. Oh, he's back out of the way. oh, he'll be there, all right. Yeah, I know. Yep. He's a little freaked yeah. out. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't think Co- so. Coobs is freaking the crap out of him between singing so. and burping and everything else that he's doing right. over there, I making noise, a lot of noise, shaking, shaking his glass. I didn't yeah. shake my ice once, buddy. Nothing. You all right now? You calm down? I am. You I'm a little calm. Ha- did you do the yeah, rose? Did you do the whole rosary, or what'd you do? I went for the rosary. <laughs> You did the rosary. Thank you, God, for letting me spend another day with my buddy. I almost, I almost got aggravated today on something. I said, "Oh, well, at uh, least you're not head. At least you're not headless." So yeah, uh, I that, could be the headless loser. Brought me right you back. Know? Yeah, that brought me right back. Yeah, that'll last for about a month, and then you'll yeah, be about, out I, I was hoping two months, but maybe a month. Yeah, huh. yeah, maybe a month. Nice. So listen, if you want to get a chance to see Louie, maybe for the last time, you don't know, come out to the fire show on Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. Might be your last time you'll see him. <laughs> I'll see you with my nub. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there with oh my, my nub. god! Yeah, Saturday, oh, Friday, oh actually god. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we'll be out there at the Nassau Coliseum. Come on out and hang out with all the salty crew. Mike Milner. I was hurt at work today. Oh, Mike Milner just texted me. He'll be there on Saturday. Oh, Maybe the great. possibly Jimmy Graham will be there. On oh, Saturday. that's nice. Yep. The mill. Oh, the mill's going to be there. Great. The mill. Yep. Very yep. excited. The mill. <laughs> Oh, you know what, people? Let's get right into this, baby. We got a couple. Of, we got to get the guests out of here. You yeah. know, we got a couple of bills to pay here. I don't know if you want to get patriotic first. How do you want to? I think we pay these bills and then we get get patriotic right before we go on. Yeah, you know do, it. do it. All right. Do it. Well, here we go, guys. As you all know, gettingsaltyapparel.com dot com is how we pay the bills around here. If you like t shirts, if you like tumblers, glasses, the new. Uh, what is it? Uh, toenail clippers. Which ones are they? the nail clippers? <laughs> the Hearst the tool nails. Hearst tool. You know what? Actually, I really like it. I need one. Is the uh, the old timey firebox key uh, uh, oh, bottle yeah, opener man. that you I gotta want. have it. Come out, yeah. get, it, get it right in your hand. No shipping. Right in your hand at the show. Yeah, man, you, that thing is you put awesome. The green back in my hand. I put the di- right in your hand like this. Watch. <laughs> See that, how that works? Murphy knows how it works. Ten bucks, yeah. little man. Put that stuff in my hand. All right, that's oh. that. That's how we do it. Um, and uh, you guys know the deal. Getting salty apparel.com is how we pay the mm. bills. T-shirts, hats, firefighter apparel, and accessories galore. Only the best for the best. Come check us out at the shows. Also, guys, super chat is uh, really another great uh, way we pay the bills here, and we are sponsored. By you, we are syndicated by you. If you want to throw us a few cha- shekels, there's a little dollar symbol in the next to the chat. There, hit that up. It could be a dollar, it could be five, whatever you guys want. It doesn't matter. Uh, we appreciate any and all. And if you guys have something that you absolutely have to ask, hit us up in the super chat. And that's that for awesome. uh, paying the bills, guys. Awesome. I want to give a shout out to Frankie Sutphin. Wait till you see what Frankie built us, Ruffy. He'll he's bringing oh. it to the show. Oh, amazing. Guys, an amazing talent. It's a Francis. Yeah, I think mm. we might bring that. Uh, we might bring that. Hey, Rev, thanks, Rev. We might bring that to every show, amongst other things. All right, let's get patriotic. We got to get our guest out here. Please. All right, thanks, Rev, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow, wow. Pete. Amazing. Hey. hey. Nice. We wow. just switched it up tonight. Uh, that way uh, we, that could talented, really, uh, we could really honor it. You All know right. what I mean? Yeah. I got a flagpole in my pants when I saw that. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, really? is that a uh, patriotic boner? You hey, just have I to swear to God, it really is. I got all upset. Yeah. I get really, I get, honestly, oh, I'm a I got all for, tingles. I really got dude, tingles on that one. I'm not kidding. July 4th is my number one holiday mm. besides Christmas. Uh, it's my. It's actually my number two besides Christmas. Mm. And mm -hmm. when I see the flags, I still get chills. I still Christmas. What kind of Christmas chills. you have in a Jewish household? What do you? Uh, what do you I just, we have a tree here, man. I think I have, listen. I'm the Catholic. My wife's the Jew. You know. That. Oh, all right. So you double dip. But but so was JC. You know what I'm saying? So you were. You're in good head. company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get our guest in here, bro. Oh, <clears> please, <throat> before he goes running, quickly. Yeah, <clears throat> let me turn up my pipes because I'm going to do it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Are you ready? <laughs> All the way from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's the Bogwa de Agua. It's the Wizard <laughs> of Water. It's the bro of H2O. He's the guy <laughs> when the pressure is high. He's the Lou that can always do. He's the Sultan of the Stamp <laughs> Pipe. Here he is, Timmy <laughs> Clack. Woo! <laughs> you asked for it. You got it. Oh, yep. shit. That was great. The I just took bull barrels. That's what I did. Hey, I right, right, bull barrels. Go. He's the salt of the stamp pipe. The salt of the stamp pipe. <laughs> salt of the stamp pipe. I haven't heard that one. That one's a good one. Yeah. That how, about, a good how about one. the bro of H2O? Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, the little side pole that you had, very good. <laughs> Holy you know what, Pete? All let's right. give out the uh, word of the day so we get drunk Ooh, tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Tonight is the night for drinking. And if you guys want to do a little, if you're new to the show, we do something called the word of the day. Whenever somebody on the show says the word of the day, we hit a little sound effect. You'll hear in a sec. And you take a swig if you want. If you want. If you don't, no problem. Here we go, guys. Yeah, the word it. of the day. Yeah, I'll show them. Do it. The word of the day today is wizard. Oh, hello. Nice. There it is. I wish this wizard could make me disappear. Oh. <laughs> I just got here. I know. <laughs> Don't worry. After you're on the show, all your friends will disappear. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're picking up in front of my house right now. Gary. <laughs> oh, Pete, this is driving me nuts. My internet keeps going out. I don't know what's going on here, bro. Uh, oh, I don't know, man. You gotta, I, got, I told you to upgrade to Verizon, dude. Yeah. All right. All right. I don't care. I'm going to work with it. You don't have to work Mink, on yeah. it. Mink, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> guys, hey, Jim, all the best. Hey, How about the old school tip of the day? All, all the best. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> I'll be all here all week. <laughs> Your waitresses, man, the shrimp's great. Holy shit, right, exactly. All right, let's right, get right into it, because you're not uh, originally from New York, right? From what I get from no. your timeline there, was it? No, not at all. No? All right, so. Oh, it. I said it. I said it. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. So you, jo you joined the you grew up, I guess, in Newington, Connecticut. Is that what we're talking? Yeah, Where is Newington, that? Connecticut. Where is it? Just south of Hartford. Yeah. With the any, first uh, town south of Hartford. Any, At the time, uh, it was the largest all volunteer department in the state. Any family on the job? What were your dad? Anybody in volleys? How you <laughs> well, my father was a volley, uh, but my family were cops by trade. There's like 20 cops in the family. So I was the only really smart one. So, <laughs> so Good for you. Uh, yeah, they're all cops. My brother, my brother-in-laws, my uncles, my nephews, my father. Were they volunteers? Cops? No, no. Were they volunteer firemen? A couple of my uncles were volunteers. Yeah, yeah, in that Newington. Yeah, but you know, I I knew the minute I popped out of my mother that you know what I was going to do in life. It was no. Uh, really, you wanted to be a fireman right out of. The I knew right away. It was you know as as a young kid, I know. I mean, it was well, no. When, when when you're the sultan of the stamp pipe, it's got to be in your blood, bro. Yeah. You, know what I mean? yeah. you don't I'm just throw it. Can I use that as that, as, as that trademark, that sultan of the stamp pipe? By all means. No, Get you back. guys up there, is it, guys is up it, there it, humping the outlet, you know what I mean? <laughs> in, in all seriousness, Tim, was it like you would see the, uh, the, the flashing lights, the red trucks, and then that just is what got you? Like, what got you as a kid? I don't know what it was. You know, my, I used to hang around uh, – you know, my, the volley station with my father when he was, was when he wasn't being a cop and they had a real, it was a 65 C model Mac. I don't know if you know what they are, but uh, it was a real cool rig. And, and I remember playing on it. It was actually the first fire truck I drove when I got in the volley. They were still using that 65 C huh. model Mac. But I, I remember 
very, very young. Whenever I went anywhere, I was looking for the toy fire trucks. I didn't put a, I got a picture of me probably at three years old wearing, wearing fire gear. So, I mean, I knew, I mean, you know, you know, I actually told my father, uh, I was in my twenties at the time. I was in the volleys and, and I wasn't a paid fireman yet. And I told him I was going to be a paid fireman. Uh, and I was going to be a paid fireman in New York city and I was going to work in 69 engine. And that's a fact. I, I, I was 10 years before I was in 69 engine. No shit. Yeah. Wow. And so this, is, so is this the rig that got you? That's a 65 C model Mac. I don't know if it's the one I drove, but yeah, that's a, it looks just like that. Is it? Yep. That's yeah. what I was looking for. Just, uh, just to show the audience yeah. if they haven't seen it already. Yeah. It was the first, it, it had a sister engine to it and up in Vernon, they were the first two diesel powered engines in the state of Connecticut. That was a sign that an engine two in, in Noint and uh, you know we just were we happen to be the best company in the town. But wow. you know, hey, uh, Lou, have you seen Pete around? Because there's this new guy here that's pulling up pictures like on the spot, and I don't know if uh, <laughs> have you seen the other have you seen the other um, Pete around? I, I haven't seen the guy that stumbles around the computer. I haven't seen him. Oh. No, oh, man. No. Uh, I was looking. I was looking for my crack pipe. You mean oh, you mean man. the sound effect oh. guy? <laughs> But I'm yeah, you're looking, looking, I should have got some sound effects. Like you know. you're looking for the taxpayer paid crack pipes. That's uh, the one. That's the one. Uh, that's the one. Yeah, there I were no wizards up there, really. either, by the way. So just so you know. Oh, what are you drinking there, wizard? There was no oh. wizards there. I'm drinking oh. a little bourbon. Oh, a little bourbon. Oh. Hang on. Hey, hey, Petey, I sent you a couple of pictures that I took off of Timmy's uh, his mm. Facebook page. I think one of them was of his father. And, yep. Uh, yep. Yep. You got I gotcha. Hold on. Oh yeah, I see it. Uh, I had them on my desktop. I forgot to send them to you. No, no, no. I think you got you got them to me. I'm good. Yeah, that's, oh, that's wow. my dad. That's my older brother John, who became a cop. Also, he actually just retired. He ended up as a chief uh, of the Berlin Police Department. Wow, uh, really? That's my brother John. That's that. That's not a. Uh, that's an old um, Maxim, like a like a '56 Maxim that they're on the back of there. What but that's my father. Uh, my my older brother John. Two people. Huh? What's he got a bow yeah, I'm, one of, I'm one of seven. Oh, me too. Uh, nothing like a big family. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Where, where are you in, in that order? Right in the middle, man. Anatomically uh, correct. I got boy, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, boy. Wow. Uh, so, Good the neighbor alone, oh, huh? I'm the last guy. <laughs> Chasing her around the house. Look at that. Yeah. No, I got, I got blamed for everything. I got beat up. I got, you know, nice middle child syndrome. And who was that? What was that picture right there, Petey? What was that? Oh, that's your old the, man there, or is that you? That's, who is that's that? another one of my father right there. Yeah, that's what they call a quad. That was a Maxim quad. Um, you know, which is it wasn't a quint. It was a quad. It was one one below it. It didn't it had everything but the aerial device on it. If you know what a, a quint or a quad. I, I love yeah. how heavy into the job Tim is. He's like. He's like, yeah, that's my old man right there. You see what they call that? That's a quad right back there. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's my dad. Anyway, they still have that rig. As a kid, that's a quad. You know, they still have that rig or no? No, they don't have that rig anymore. Look at the shine on that rig too, bro. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Things sparkling. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, those on your, uh, yeah, he ended up dying right. very young. He retired from the cops, and about two years after he retired, he uh, he passed away. Oh no! Um, probably how old? Fifty nine. Dude, wow. my dad was 57. Same thing. Three yeah. years retired. Look at all these things we got in common, Wizard. My, fa yes. my father was one Oops, year seven retired. kids to do that to you, man. Hell yeah, seven kids to do that to you. Yes, they will. Uh -huh. mm. Yes, they will. All right, so you, you joined the volleys really young, 78 as a cadet member. I guess yeah. that's like a junior member <clears throat> or... Yeah, is. it's a junior member. You, you get all the training. So what happens is when once you're trained, you, when you, when you get sworn in, you're fully trained, and you know that day you you have all the training, so you're active. You don't have to go oh, through cool. the training. You have to get it. It's basically it's you get trained before you're on. That's all it is. So two years later, you're sworn in as a full interior member. Yeah. In this, what is that a new a different place, Newington, or is that the same one? No, that's New oh, Britain. No, same uh, one. Uh, right. no, same one. Uh, in in eighty in December of nineteen eighty, I got sworn in. Uh, in, in that place. It was, it was actually a very busy little fire department at the time. Um, and there is one fire I want to talk about there um, because, you know, everybody says they have fires that define them, you know, right. in, in their lives. And, and, you know, um, and, you know, we, we've all been a lot of fires and, but this one in particular was a place called the pillars. Um, and I remember the date. it was, it was Friday the 13th, 1984. Hmm. And a, a four-year-old girl was killed at it, but we could hear her. You know, we were trying to get to her. Ooh. And, you know, when you're, when you're 22 years old, you, you think you're the guy. You know what I mean? You think you're the one. You're the guy that's the best guy in that department. 
And, uh, you know, that, gay, that day I wasn't. And we listened to her die. I mean, we really oh, did. Man. We couldn't get her. She was on the other side of a, a, a refrigerator, a screwed in uh, piece of plywood, a screwed in door. And by the time we got to her, she, she, she was gone already. And, um, you know, I swore to myself that day. That was the day I knew right, that I would never, ever, ever not be good enough again. And wow. that's when I really, truly dedicated myself to learning as much about this job as I could uh, that day, 1984. That was the day that defined me for the rest of my career. And it's important because I think everybody has those fires in their careers that define them or who they are. Yeah. You know, and, you know, when you, you know, because we all challenge ourselves, you guys have, we have, you come back, could I have done this? And, and that would, that's what makes us great firemen, that we challenge ourselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was the defining moment for me. I still challenge myself at fires, but that's the one I wish I had back. You know, I wish yeah. I, I had that fire today. The, the outcome would be a lot different. And that was you know? so, so early in your career too, man. Wow. I was 22 years old. At the time, oh. and I was a volunteer, and and I was, uh, was everybody that age, or was there older people there? Or there were older, kinda... Yeah, but you know the valleys. There were older people there, but it was a guy yeah, that was yeah, with yeah. me trying to get her. He was a paid guy. His name was Matt Nelson, a real good guy, real good fireman. And uh, me and him were trying to get her, and we just we just couldn't. We just it wasn't the fire, wasn't what we had to get through all these obstacles to get there. And by the time we got there, um, that position became pretty untenable. Yeah, that's um, tough. That's a tough yeah. So, uh, but but and, you know, I'm not trying to you know, it's just. Fires that define us, and everybody's mm. had them. And, and if you don't move on from there, that's what. Hey, ready for this? That's what men do. Hey, Whoa. Right. Oh. Move on, that's ten percent. Right? That's ten percent right there. I gotta give ten percent on that do one too, you, right? Um, <laughs> after, after that, out of curiosity, after that fire, do you guys um, sit around the kitchen table and break that one down and no, talk about not, it? Not, not in that venue. You know, we would now, and in, in, in the paid side, we would, but not then. You know, you, you, I went home and I broke it down with a with a case of beer. You know, that's that's what we did. You know, mm. um, did you did you? But over the years, do you think about it like from a technical perspective? Like, do you go like, all right, if I was there today, now I would have done X, Y, Z. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. I would have done stuff differently there. One, you know, I would have taken a little more time to to look at the overall situation and. You know, I was just going where they told me to go. I was blindly going where they told me to go. And, you know, now I would take a little more time and slow down and, and take in the whole picture. But and in other words, though, you really did what you were supposed to do because you were young. You were 22 years old and they told you to go somewhere. You went somewhere. So, you know, but yeah. So that's just a hindsight uh, being. But it is a, it, a it's still, hindsight. still is a fire that defines who we are. Yeah. I mean, and everybody has one. If you ask everybody that comes on the show, they're going to have that fire. Uh, mm -hmm. That defines who they are and what you know put them pushes you, right? Pushes you it, to be better. exactly pushes you to to excel, you know, because everybody knows there's guys on this job and then there's guys on this job yeah, that yeah, excel. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's guy and and you want to be the guy that excels, and if you don't push yourself, you're never going to be that guy. Wow. Simple as that. You know, well, you're see, never going to be. Got, I think we got to add that as long with the with the old school tip of the day. You know, something like that. Like what fire you know changed your career. <laughs> Good. It's, it's a good question to ask people that you know really define yeah. you know when 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 did you really decide that listen you were going to be good or you're just going to be a yeah. fireman you know and and that was the day i mean luckily it happened early in my career because after that day i took every class i, I was in classes i never should have been in as a young mm -hmm. kid i took i saw uh, you probably don't even know who he is a guy named francis brannigan um you know yeah. he was one of the first guys out there teaching basic building instruction i mean i took that class at 22 years old i had no business being there you know, that was a chief's class, but it was all I could get. And, you know, I, I took everything I could get. Uh, and, you know, you don't know what you know till you, till you need it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, but I did want to talk him, about that one fire. Do we got to give him 10% now if we use that question on every show still? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no shit, maybe 15. You know, uh, I am the wizard. Wow. I am the wizard. Hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's got to run this show. <laughs> Very he nice. is on a fixed income, paycheck to paycheck. We know how it goes. That's it. it doesn't suck. No, all right. So that's what Louis says all the time. It don't suck. It doesn't <clears> suck. So let's see. So then you, seven years go by and you get hired as a full-time paid firefighter. What are you doing between those seven years? Were you going to school? Were you working? What were you doing? I was just working. I didn't go to college. You know, and, and you know, I took the 81 test in New York. Right. Um, and, you know, like a guy said, you know, there's a couple guys I, I um, that were in that New Britain with me. And three of us ended up in New York. You, you probably know. You probably know him too. Uh, Timmy Brown. I don't know if you ever heard that name. Yeah. Timmy Brown. He does this stuff on 9/11 stuff. He talked. Uh, he was in New Britain with me. And Jay Walsh. He retired at 59 Engine. 
His brother's mm -hmm. the guy that does all the paintings. He's a chief up in New Britain also. And, uh, you know, we took all those tests together. We took the 81 test together. So we, we were going down to New York a lot um, prior to us getting hired. I actually hooked up and I ended up riding in 41 engine in the South Bronx for a number of years with a guy named Eddie Keating. I don't know if you ever heard that name. Not, yeah, I've heard that name. Uh -huh. Oh, he was some guy, man. He really was. He was some. First time I met him, I pulled up in front of 41 Engine uh, in their quarters on, on 150th Street. And he jumped off the rig and he had a grass skirt and a Hawaiian shirt on. This is staining <laughs> <laughs> like, this, is, this is the place for me, you know? And, uh, so I was I was riding with um, with him when I was going down. I was taking Pudgy Walsh's classes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I took Pudgy's class. Too. Everybody did Pudgy Walsh's Everybody took that class. Yeah. So one story about Eddie, because, you know, I love the guy, you know, he's, he's gone now, but he got hired in like 1958 and he worked in squad two and in the South Bronx for all those war years. And I was riding with him one night after taking Pudgy's class. And I think Jay or Paul was with me and it was a change of tours in the morning. So a, a, a friend of mine, Timmy Brown was in 73 at the time. He stopped to see us and a run comes in for a fire. So Timmy jumps on the rig. We jump on the rig, the day tour and the night court jump. So there's gotta be 15 <laughs> guys on the rig. They're riding the back, they're on the top of so we pull up and I'm thinking to myself that Eddie is going to blow a gasket. He's going to, that's it. You can't ride here no more. And, and I get off the rig and I'm standing there and all these guys, and Eddie jumps off the rig. He looks at everybody and goes, nice turnout. <laughs> and there's 15 guys running off How the rig. How many guys can you fit in the fire building? Oh, yeah. The big floppy shoes, right? <laughs> but yeah. Um, so uh, I, I went to the city of New Britain in, uh, in uh, May of 87. Mm -hmm. I got hired to see of <clears throat> and I stayed there until I went to New York City. I did leave Would for two days. I went to the city of Hartford. I got hired there for two days, and I went to their academy like a stupid young kid and, and left. So that's what I was mm -hmm. going to ask. So you just you threw up applications all over the place. You knew I was taking tests it. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And I uh, so I was in. I was working in the city of Britain. <clears throat> Hartford called me, and it was a bigger city. It was a, it was a bigger job, and I had a good friend of mine. Eddie Pospisil, um, you know, he was the guy in the fire. Oh, patrol. yeah, yeah. He's, he posts a lot of pictures, too. Right? Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a wealth of knowledge about old-time New York stuff. He, he's the guy that got the medal um, for the 23rd Street collapse in the fire patrol. He was the guy that drew the map that allowed them to find all those guys that went in the basement in 66. Actually, he's still a chief of, of a fire department up in Corinth, um, wow. Vermont, I think it is. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, he's in great shape, that guy. So... Uh, he was there and uh, he was really pissed at me when I left, but I went to their academy and there was some stuff going on. I didn't like, so I'm an idiot. I'm a young kid. I go back to New Britain and like New Britain chief didn't talk to the heart. They're one city, they're one town apart. So I almost lost my job in New Britain uh, because I went to Hartford, you know, for wow. two days. Yeah. But so, if you but, didn't get called uh, for, for New York city, would you have stayed there where you are or you would have cont continued to well, look elsewhere? I would have gone to Hartford, but what happened was when I, when I was in Hartford's, I got the letter just before I went to Hartford, I got the letter for the uh, agility test in New York and I would have been in their academy and I would right. have had, a, I had to make a decision either go to Hart, stay in Hartford or, you know, and I know I had a good uh, written test. Right. So uh, I, I went back to New Britain, <clears throat> the agility test, and I, I got hired in the second class off of that list. Because Hartford does some work, don't they? They still do a lot of work. Oh, yeah. 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 They, got they still do a lot of work up there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. I I'm surprised yeah. they haven't run out of buildings yet. You know? yeah. <laughs> Could say that about a lot of cities. For oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, Holy yeah. Holy shit. So, yeah, I worked wow. up there. It was a great place to work. I loved it. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of laughs <laughs> in that place. Uh -huh. uh, you know, like a lot of guys don't understand about a small city is that, um, you know, you're the guy. I mean, you, you go in and you'll go three, three or four bottles. Uh, right. You know, I, I took a class <clears throat> Uh, from a guy, and he ended up being one of my captains when I got hired in New York. But I took a class from this guy, and uh, um, he's a big truck guy. And, uh, you know, I asked him, I says, can you prior prioritize the list of things that, that you have to do when it's only me? You know, when it's one guy. So is it is it the fire department, the floor above, the roof, or the OV? You know, put them. And basically his answer was, "You there's only one of you? I said, yeah. He goes, well, then you're screwed. <laughs> like, that's not the answer I'm looking for. You know what I mean? So um, a funny story there. I was when I transferred to the truck, when I realized I wasn't a truck guy, um, we had a real good job just up the street from the firehouse. And so I got up to the second floor with the engine, I got the door for them. And I figured, you know what? I'll go to the floor above. I'll let the engine do the fire because there's nobody else. So I go to the floor above. I get I get uh, the apartment above 
I open, I do a room, but it's totally vacant. There's nothing in it. So I go across the hall and there's very little smoke in there. I do the front room and I'm like, I'm not doing the back. There's nobody in here. So I yell out, hey, anybody here? Anybody here? Nobody's in there. So I come out, I got to change my bottle. I walk out, I tell the chief in front of the building, I say, hey, listen, top floor is oh, good. No. Nobody up there. He goes, good. When you change your bottle, can you get the people off the third floor there at the window? <laughs> <laughs> the window? Yeah, I'll get him, chief. I said, oh, no, this is not going to be good, man. Anytime yeah. you leave yourself, I mean, no matter what, not just that, but anytime you leave yourself open, just without being 100%, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's Murphy's going to show up without a doubt. You yeah. Know? Well, Murphy was there that there in full yeah, fury. I'll yeah, tell you yeah, that. Yeah. I look up, it's a woman and a kid at the third floor. And then there's no smoke, but you know, he looked at me, he goes, okay, when they go back in, get them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I knew you it know. was going that way. So, we just so that's that. what but I, I, had a, I had a great time there. It was great people. Um, really, really was. Um, it just, you know, I was basically I left because I wanted to go to more fires. That was the only reason I left. It wasn't right. pension. It wasn't, I just wanted to go to more fires. So now, yeah. did your friends already, were they already there? Were you the first out of the three to go? Uh, no, Timmy Timmy went in 84. He went to 73 engine, uh, Timmy Brown. And then he ended up going to four truck and then ended up in rescue tree. And he did a stint in OEM. Um, I went and then Jay went and actually a kid named Kevin Hayes uh, went also. He ended up uh, a lieutenant or captain, but he was a lieutenant in three truck or a captain in three truck when he got out. He's in the, he's in the band. Uh, and then Paul ended up staying. The guy that does the paintings. You saw the paintings. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. uh, uh -huh. yes. uh -huh. The guy that does the paintings. He actually stayed in New Britain. Uh, Paul did. And uh, he's actually retiring. I'm going up for his last tour in two weeks. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. It was it, it was a good place. I, I was glad I went there. I learned a lot. Uh, you know, one of these old time lieutenants told me a story that uh, he was in a truck and they had a guy trapped at the top floor. And he goes up the aerial and, he, and you know, he's got to pull the guy out. But he doesn't realize the guy's in a wheelchair. He's got no legs. So he pulled him out of the window. He threw them. He threw him <laughs> off the area. To go. Yeah, yeah, no legs. He, he figured he was going to into, into the pool. Yeah, he into the pool. His name was Bob. <laughs> yeah, and then you know all the second two companies were holding up the numbers. Hey, that was a ten. You know, like. Yeah. His name was Bob. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. He had at least uh, he had one leg up on Johnny Wolfis. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Did you well, stop last night thinking about that one? <laughs> oh. Just came to me. Uh. <laughs> Okay. I, I got to uh, ask so a question, though. We were in engine one. What made yep. you want to try to truck out, you know, for what, a year and a half before you went to the I engine didn't have one? a choice. I didn't oh, have a okay. choice. They sent me there. They sent me there. And actually, when I left, they were opening a rescue, and the chief pulled me aside. He says, I know you, you want to go to New York, but we're opening a rescue company. And he goes, you're slated to go to the rescue. And I was like, you know what? I, I said, and, I, and it was great. It really was a great place to work. The guys were great. The job was good. There were fires there. I just wanted to go to more fires. And that mm. was the only thing. And I, and I left. I went to more fires. I, that's what right. I did. You know, that was the only reason. Did you see that uh, one super chat to ask the, the boss a question? Yeah, there's a couple questions from the super chat. Um, one, what about being, the Sippy? I don't know. Please, sippy. please, yeah, please, please ask uh, what was the family car Tim used back in the 1990s? Uh, sippy, yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, 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 you know, like when you know, I, I used to drive a, a Thunderbird around, I had a great Thunderbird, 88 Thunderbird when I got oh. out of job. But then I had a kid. <laughs> I had, uh, right, I, I was going to get the turbo coupe, right? Oh my so god! I had a kid, and I ended up having. I bought a Taurus wagon. So nice. one day, the yeah, it was nice. Up. So so one day at the firehouse, though, you know, looking to move cars. Whose car is that? I go, that's my car, and it's the Taurus. And I said to the guy, you know what car that is? You know, my last name's Clet, so you know what it is. It's the Clet Taurus. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what? Hey, maybe you want to wash the clet Taurus. That didn't take long to figure out. Huh? Oh <laughs> man, you know he, he could do so much with that, bro. My oh my father God. loved that joke. Everywhere we went, he would grab people and go, tell them what car you drive. I go, I have a Clet Taurus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. Dude. Oh, shit. Leave it to the brothers, right? Oh, my oh God. My yeah, God. Clet Taurus. Oh That's what I used to drive around. I had a green one and a red one. You know which one the red one was? You know, I only drive it once a month. You know, that one. Oh I do have God. another question, but I'm going to wait till we get to 69 engine to talk about it. Yeah, tell um, me. 
because uh, I don't know if we can top and, Zippy's question, bro. That was oh that was a perfect setup. Awesome, bro. I know there's a lot of questions out there because don't I've been worry, little, little birds, all good. We'll just keep moving along, nice yeah, and the, nice the and The more mellow. questions, the more you know, well loved guy you are. That's what I, that's what I think, bro. Uh, I think it was hilarious that you know we we found out about the clitoris tonight. <laughs> you know, so that's <laughs> a <laughs> you, listen. You're, you're, you're like that wait. could be one of the best jokes I've I've heard so far. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that that could be one you know, you you hit two home runs already and it's only oh 8 30 so oh you know. shit. <laughs> true story the clitoris that true story I told him. <laughs> in my life yeah, yeah, that's- <laughs> uh, i did you, you know took that one away from you let, 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 let me ask you something on was, friday not last friday when it was dark <laughs> when it was dark outside did you have a hard time finding the clitoris <laughs> oh. well, i was like two can sam i followed my notes no that's <laughs> it. all right that's it all right moving on moving on <laughs> <laughs> we can do this, can do this all night can we, can we, can we write this train right now because it's Take the nickel, all right we're gonna we're gonna re- we're gonna write the ship so where was he kev where was he in the uh oh, I, I'm, I'm stuck i'm stuck at the clitoris i don't know if i can go past <laughs> that no, the clitoris. i don't know where your mind is yeah <laughs> you feel the animal yeah <laughs> we're, we're, we're up to the point where he gets appointed october 21st 1990 class 5 of 90 and assigned yep. to engine 47 47 engine you know when I, when i got assigned him and uh i was supposed to go to 69 out of proby school uh, i had a, i had a very good hook uh, he'll remain nameless at the time. Uh, but he told me I actually have a copy of the order of me going to 69 engine. And it got changed at the last minute because another guy was going there out of my proby class, a guy named Jimmy Scarkis, who, who was a very, very dear friend of mine now. But he ended up going to 28 truck and they weren't going to put two probies in that house at the same time. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, he called me and he says, how about a good engine in the fifth division? Because we were still the fifth division then. And uh, I said, whatever you think, man. And, and he put me in 47 engine. And he said, listen, do a couple years and, and we'll get you up there. Do a year or so, we'll get you up there on a skin. So, you know, I'm driving down 113th Street from the east side. I'm like, holy shit, this neighborhood is horrible. You know, yeah. it's terrible. And I get, I get all the way to the end to, to uh, you know, Morningside Park. And I'm like, where the frig is this firehouse? So I go around and I get up to the top by St. John Divine. And there it is there. So it was a great firehouse in a nice neighborhood that responded to the shit. So it, it was good. And that's that one picture. Can you pull that picture up from 47 we talked about earlier? Because uh, I, I think it's important. Greco. That picture one, right? With Greco, with, with, with Greco? is that yeah. the one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten four coming up. So this is this is me. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm, I'm at the very end. Uh, Davey Hartman and uh, Paul DeBell is there. Uh, the Count's son, the Count of Bilal, the kid. But at the very end with the 47 on the far right, that's Paul Greco. And he was in 47 engine when I was there. And Paul ended up going to one of the squads, 288. Was it 270. 270. He went out to 270. Uh, and uh, he just recently passed away um, from 9 11 cancer. But his he's the guy whose son just uh, played with the Rangers. Yeah, his um, first game. Yeah, yeah Paulie, a real, a real, real good dude, a great guy. Um, you know, he, he ended up going out to Queens a little bit after I left and went to 69 Engine. Uh, there was another guy that was there, a guy named Bobby Cook. I don't know if you ever heard of Bobby Cook. He went to 126 truck. Never out heard of Queens, him. and you never heard of him. He, he <laughs> played uh, lacrosse with the New York Saints, but he used to call me when I went to 69. He went out there and he asked me how things were going, and I said, "Good." He goes, "I go how things in 126 truck." He goes, "It's great. I got them, you know, like eating out of the palm of my hand." I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, I tell him if they cook me a good meal, I'll tell him a scary Harlem fire story." <laughs> no, <laughs> that would have worked. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's Paulie Greco there, and that's. You know, that's uh, 117th Street, right off of uh, 7th Avenue. What happened in this picture? You guys didn't feel like uh, stretching any lines or anything? What was well, there was a rubbish <laughs> fire in the front yard when we died. Plenty, of time, plenty of time to take a photo. I know there's no problem. Yeah. All good. The foundation was <laughs> remained in fact. We'll get the line. Don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's 47. They don't stretch the lines unless there's 24 uh, floors of fire, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, get 10 exactly. floors of fire. It's gotta there, be there was a lot of great guys. More. There was a captain there, uh, Charlie Corcoran. They called him Cuckoo Charlie Corcoran. You may remember <laughs> from the 3-8 Battalion. He was out in the 3-8 Battalion. I don't know if you were there mm, when he was there, but he, no. he ended up moving to – Montana and buying a farm and he named all his cows after companies in the city. Like, you know, that one was the pride of Morningside and that oh one was, my God, you're sure. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And all he wanted to do was go to fires, this guy. And he was never, he wasn't an engine boss at all. He, he you know, 
<clears throat> we'd be sitting on the back step waiting to stre stretch it on the line. And he was nowhere to be found. And he heard a division talking, you know, division five to Charlie, he'd say, and he'd be on the floor <laughs> above doing searches. Like, what are we supposed to do? We had a fire one night with him in, in a vacant on 110th Street. And uh, it was going pretty good. It was out about six windows on like the fifth floor of a big six story building. So he never wore his mask, you know? And uh, we get in there and we stretch up. We get right to the door to the fire department. They get the door and it is shitty. So he looks at the guy who's a detail that's got the door position and he tells the guy, hey, give me your mask. So the guy looks at him and says, give me your light. <laughs> <laughs> goes, if, you're gonna, if I got to give you something, you got to give me something for it. You should have pulled that one on Patty Lee with the can store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. When you <laughs> were in, uh, was Tommy <laughs> Evans up in there? What's that? 40 truck? Was Tommy Evans in 40 truck when you were there? Probably not. I did 30 days up there. That was some shop. I'll tell you that. You know, uh, 40 truck was a, uh, I did, uh, I was supposed to go to 22 truck. And uh, Bobby Morris, I don't know if you know that name. Never heard him. Uh, yeah. Never heard him. So uh, he was actually covering it in 40 truck, and we were kind of friends. So he brought me up to 40 truck to do my 30 days. And that was uh, that was some experience up there. You know, there were some characters in that place. You know, that guy named Kevin Kelly who used to love to headbutt everybody. I mean, he would have headbutting contests in the kitchen. Oh, you want to headbutt that. this guy right here? Maybe no way. Take the nickels, right? Take, take the, the nickels. Nickel. Was like six, take I was nickels. trying to tell you before, there was like six guys in the chat saying, take the nickels. Oh, was it really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what's funny is because there was a guy in 103, uh, Schwicky, and they used to say the uh, same exact thing. What would you rather yeah. have, a million dollars or Schwicky's head full of nickels? I used to tell him, listen, guys, you can take all the nickels you want. He goes, but look around this room. You guys should all invest those nickels and buy a mirror because your heads are bigger than mine, man. <laughs> I said, we're going to rule the world one day. All you little pea heads. And there's a couple of the pictures here. You know, we're going to rule the world one of these days. Us big headed guys. There Boy, you go. Yeah, somebody yeah, wrote in the chat 26 plus 14 equals 40. They always said that. that was, yeah, that was right, in the, right over the, uh, on the. Above the uh, windows of the rig, 26 plus 14. And if people don't realize, 26 truck and 14 truck were the two trucks they ran in with. So they put 26 plus 14 equals 40. That's great, bro. Yeah. yeah that that place, 40, right? that was a great, that was a great shop. They were, you know, the captain of 40 at the time, Jack Wren, was a, was a wonderful man. How he survived that place, I'll never know. Um, you know, but he was a one. And then there was Schaefer in the engine, who was an absolute, he used to wear a, a German U-boat hat. The fires, you know, he was just it was, you know, it was you, uh, years you, ago. You catch work up there in 40 truck, yeah, just about every time I went to work, yeah. Wow, yeah, we went to a, we went to a uh, a job right off of, of uh, Broadway in a uh, big storage building, and um, it must have got going before they wanted to because uh, we found one empty what you know, those the the uh, the buckets they put in the water coolers, you know, what I mean, the five gallon water yeah, yeah, buckets. Mm -hmm. So yep. one of them was empty, and we found five more full of gasoline. Five more. Got away from them. So they, they were pouring it under a, a roll-down gate, and it must have ignited. So it didn't take the whole building, but they were looking to take the whole place. Yeah. That was a, that was a great place. 40 truck, yeah. real, real, real good outfit. You know, the, the senior guys there, a guy named Al Farney, Skip McEwen, they ran that place. And actually, the picture of us in front of the, the building there with um, the Greco. Yeah, a few 40 um, guys in there. Yeah. Al Farney took that picture. Yeah. <clears throat> How far he took that. He was all, he always had a camera with him. So, but a lot of characters, 47 engine, a, a story about 47 engine was a guy there named Eddie Callahan. They called him Barbara Bush because he had the curly <laughs> white hair. He looked just like Barbara Bush. You know? <laughs> he did. He did. He did. He was, you know, so, you know, I was a pro beer, a new guy there, and he was. He was breaking my balls, just absolutely breaking my balls constantly about, you know, what kind of an Irish name is Clet? You know, it isn't. It's Scottish German. But, you know, my, my other my other grandparents are off the boat from Ireland. So he says to me, and, and you'll be astonished by this story. He says to me, <clears throat> really? He goes, uh, you, 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 your grandparents are from Ireland? I says, yeah. Now, remember, I grew up in Hartford, Connecticut, and he grew up in the Bronx. So he says, where, where are your grandparents from? And I said, well, my grandmother, uh, she's a Macaw, and she's <clears throat> from Clare. He goes, where in Claire? And I say, well, a place called Milltown. Milltown. I go, you wouldn't know. It's small. He goes, Milltown Malbay? I go, how the fuck do you know that? I go, he goes, my mother's from Milltown Malbay. No I'm like, shit. get the fuck out of here. It turns out that his mother 
and my grandmother were childhood friends in Ireland. Oh my God. Wow. And they came over to the country, the two of them, <clears throat> in 1924 together. Come on. And hadn't spoken 50 years. I can't believe oh, this guy. Good. I can't believe this guy told you all. Yeah, that. there's Eddie Callahan right there. <laughs> yeah. He had a few more wrinkles though. He had a What's few up, more Ed? wrinkles. Yeah, and he had a beer in his hand. Hey Eddie. And he had a beer. <laughs> he had a beer in his hand. That's a hopefully, remarkable hopefully story. Hopefully didn't have right a pearl neck. Yeah, that's like it. That. You know, when everybody always says, Oh, I got a small world story, I go, no, nah, I got one that tops that. that that's like, that's a topper right there. Bro. I, I definitely got one that tops that story, you know. One better so, one better gazetta, bro. <laughs> yeah. oh, but, but 47 was great. I hated leaving there. There was a guy up there named Tommy Stringer. Um, he had in for 69 engine. And my guy called me and he says, uh, Timmy, he goes, I can get you an onion next week. And the order was supposed to come out in a month. And, you know, you get to know a guy. And, and I was like, you know what? I, I can't you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to jap him. And I, I told Tommy and he, he didn't believe me. I go, listen, I'm going to wait till you're there. And, and then I'll I'll go up there, and he goes, you don't have that kind of weight. And he went there on the order, and a week later I went up on the onion skin. But I and I did it later on with uh, Eddie Hans alone uh, in twenty eight truck. He had it for twenty eight truck. I had it for twenty eight truck. And my guy says I can get you any next order. And I said, you know what, Eddie's got more time in the place. Let Eddie go there, and I'll, I'll go next. You know. He's and a I, funny I never. Guy. Eddie's a funny guy. Eddie's a good guy, bro. How do you go Who, wrong? Eddie? Nope. You know Eddie? No, you talking about you? <laughs> I got a great Eddie Hans alone story. Uh, you know, I was telling you, the, so I shouldn't, but so we're jumping a little bit ahead, but we're, you know, we're in 69 engine. It was one of those nights up there. You know, we used to get real busy in the winter time up there. We called it the winter offensive and 28 was at a fire and uh, we had just gone in service from a fire. So we get an ARS box that right down the street from the firehouse. It's a big pie shaped building, you know? And uh, so we get there and, and we know we got a job. So it's an ERS. We give the, we give the 1075, um, but no one's, you know, it's going to be a while because all these companies are out, the relocators aren't in yet. So we get the line up like the third floor. I forget where it was, third floor or something, me and Eddie, and then we stretch and, and, and it's two long hallways. One, it goes this way. One, it goes this way. <clears throat> so we get to the top of the stairs and, um, you know, the boss says, stay here. We're not going to commit the line until I know, you know, which direction we got to go. So he takes off and the, and the boss goes like to the left down the hallway. And then we look and out of the smoke. I mean, and it's pretty shitty. Comes this little old black lady walking down the hallway, not coughing, nothing. It's you know, like she, grew, yeah. Well, no, where she grabs Eddie by the arm <laughs> and tugs him, and Eddie rips away from her like this, and she taps him on the shoulder and says, "What's the matter, Sonny? Your first fire?" Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. She had been burned out like three times, so we end up going down. But what's the matter, Sonny? So every fire after that, it was, hey, what's the matter, son? Your first fire? <laughs> oh, those ones you take with you for the rest of your career, bro. Yeah, the wizard. The wizard wouldn't have done it. Hey. Come on, who's running know. this show? Me or you guys? <laughs> Tonight, it's you. Hey. With the you, guys, you, you, know, you know what I mean? We got a producer. Hey. Me. <laughs> so, but yeah, 47 was good. I ended up going up to 69. and I had an interesting first tour. Um, what year did you get there? Uh, late 92, I got up. Yep. There. All right, boys. Well, it's, it's funny. You're pushing me over the edge. Oh, oh, look. He got his man caught yeah, all yeah, of a sudden. Now he's all, he's all, uh, all I had to do it. grew a pair, that guy, right? Yeah, it had to be done. So what? That's what? The 16th Battalion? The 16th Battalion. 16th. So, yeah, still just, the 5th Division. Yeah, so just to let you know. So when I got I got on in May of 93, and I remember, like, when I first started, I would listen to the radio, listen to the radio. You know, guys would go up to the rack. Uh, up to the bunks, you know, midnight one, I would, I would stay up. Right. And I had the thing scanning and I would hear 1200 boxes, 1400 boxes, 1600 boxes, right? 1200, 16, 14, 16, 14, 1200, 12 battalion, 16 battalion, 12 battalion, yeah. 16 battalion. 12, and I would say to myself, what the hell is going on up there? Like, yeah. I, and then when I talked to a few of my friends, uh, a couple of my friends, uh, Bobby Canale went to uh, 58 Engine. I love Bobby Canale. Uh, yeah, so he, he was on with me. And there was a bunch of other guys that, you know, were, were scattered throughout there. And he was telling me how small the areas were. Like, it was only like... like 69's know. first two area was pretty... Because we, you know, we had the river and then the hill. But, you know, like I was saying, my first night there, we went to five fires. Uh, dude, I remember hearing box wow. after box up there. Like, yeah. I couldn't believe I it. had many, many nights I went to five fires. Many, many, many night tours. Wow. wow. You know, and my best 24, I went to nine fires in, in 69. Wow. You know, but it was that winter. And it was funny. Like, this guy, this one guy, you know, we're, we're going out. We're going to a third alarm down by 59 engine, 58 engine on 116th Street. 
and uh, Park Avenue. So we're going, and it was like five after six. And uh, this guy comes down, he jumps, and he's hanging on the window of the rig trying to punch me in the face, saying, what? who sent you? Who sent you? And I'm, I'm like, what the fuck did I do? You know, but uh, thank God we were out all night. We didn't come back and have to deal with that guy because we went from that fire to another fire. And we ended up uh, we ended up at a vacant over by the 12th Battalion. 59 engine was out. And, um, you know, one of my mentors, this guy, John Newell, um, I can't say enough about him. You know, I worked with some unbelievable officers. I mean, legends on this job. And, you know, like uh, and guys like Patty Brown was was one of my officers. Morris, wow. Cassidy, Kennedy, uh, Griffin, Visconti were the chiefs up there. And, and, you know, you don't hear Johnny Newell's name, but that guy, man, taught me everything I knew. That guy was the guy for me. He And I loved Patty Brown and, and working with Morris. But John Newell was that guy. He just, you know, he was always ready to go to work. And, you know, like, and he 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 challenged you to be the best you could be. You know, he was really that guy. And uh, that first night we ended up, he came in and relieved uh, this guy, Joe Flanagan. And he they relieved. And sure enough, we ended up on 139 Street. And we're, we've been up all night. <clears throat> and uh, he gets off the rig and he always had that bottle with him. First, second, third do, third alarm, fourth. He always had the rope with him. And he gets off, he's got the rope. First new engine, got the rope. And he looks back at us, we're sitting in the rig. He goes, come on, guys, you got a job. And we look up and we're like, fuck, with another fire. So we end up going up there and uh, I watched the nozzle man, a guy named Mike Hayes, and Eddie Anzalo was working. So, And they stand it up and they just walk in it. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> You know, it was a crazy, crazy, crazy night, my first night there. But I I love that place. It, <laughs> it must have been place. like, holy shit. It was, this is how it's gonna be like every night. It was <laughs> oh yeah. That was uh there were there were Ooh, uh, there were great guys, you know, uh, in that place. Um we did a lot of different stuff. I had a white ghost, you ever heard a white ghost? You know, that used to be in the books, it's not even the books anymore. But a white ghost is when the oil burners used to they wouldn't ignite and the basement would fill of vaporized oil. So they called it a white ghost. And I was with, uh, I was with Vinnie Leahy. Um, he was a Lieutenant 20. I was working in the truck. We get in this basement. And he realized that it's, it's full of these unignited vapors. And sure enough, the freaking thing Flash lights off. Over. Holy the shit. whole entire basement goat lights off. And all you hear is the tool, the can. And I think, and I look and I, I see the, the fire come out of the oil burner pit and hit Vinnie Leahy in the face. And I'm thinking he's dead. I grab the can and I figured I'm going to put him out. I get in there, he stands up and all his ears burned. I look at him, he goes, that was close. <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on here, man? You can't even make that up, right? I mean, you, you can't, can't make, make that, that shit up. up. You know, was, uh, Eddie Anzalo, was he a, did he become a chief too in the fall? No, the fall no, no. Fall? He, he retired no. as a fireman. He, you uh, know what? Eddie's a great, great, great dude, man. You know, I know he made, he made a lot of enemies when he was when he because he's the Jets guy. You know, he's <laughs> oh, the okay, the, okay, I know, okay. I know that's, that name. Man, that's oh, I, I know that name from somewhere, bro. Yeah, he's the JTS Jets 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 guy. So when he was average, when he was trying to get that stadium built, you know, a lot of guys were like that guy, that guy. And I said, you know what? First of all, in front of me, keep your mouth shut because that guy's a good dude. A quick story about Eddie: what he did uh, when I was in New Britain, I met a guy, this guy Chris Anderson, and he calls me. I'm in New York now, 15 years. And he calls me and he asks me, hey, do you know what he ends alone? I said, yeah, said, I went to his wedding. He goes, my nephew was playing football and he got a stinger. And he went to the hospital. They find a brain tumor. Holy they shit. Take the brain tumor out. Now, he's never going to be able to play football again, but he's a <clears> huge Eddie <throat> Anzalone. And he, all he wants is an autographed picture. So I call Eddie. I says, can you get me an autograph? He goes, what if I bring the picture up to the kid? So he drives two and a half hours. He brings the picture to the kid, spends the whole day with the kid, and then takes, you know, he gives him his number, brings him to the stadium on the field. And he's a good dude. You know, like a lot of guys, he's a really, really good dude. You know? So, but Why he wasn't the wizard. Uh, oh, Peter, oh, wizard. There you go. Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, sitting there, I'm looking up an article for. Uh, Listen, first so, of all, this is a Harlem show, so you better oh, keep up with it. Oh, okay. oh Ooh, my, it's very yeah. scary. Harlem. Well, well, Harlem. Mr. Listen, if you're like, Mr. Like, Frank. Like would say, if you're really good, I'll tell you some scary Harlem fire stories. Right. And Mr. Oh. Frank Mole in the uh, chat is saying that. Uh, there's a WNYF article about white ghosts that I was looking forward to. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we I actually like, had one go off. Yeah. Yeah, right. with Vinny yeah. So when you were in 69, was Morris the captain of 28? So when I when I went up to 69, it was a guy named Pat Welby. He actually recently passed away from a car accident out in the island. Pat Welby was the captain, only for a couple of weeks, but he was a funny dude. Was this, you know, he was out of 88 and 38, to be honest with you. And he came up to 69, and, and I was in there one day, and I was only there with him for about a week. 
and uh, some big muscle bound guy comes in from the Bronx looking to, to cause used to doesn't happen anymore. Guys used to go and interview with the captain to go to a company. And uh, so he comes in and he doesn't even talk to the guy. He stands up and he says, and he's got the thick Irish brogue. He goes, he goes, listen, he goes, take your muscles back to the Bronx boys. It's balls I'm looking for. And he shoot, the guy looked at me. I go, I don't Holy know what to shit. tell you, bro. <laughs> That's a, I got to write that one down. Out the door now. he goes. That's a t-shirt right there, bro. <laughs> right it's down. balls I'm looking for. So, but <laughs> Patty, Pat, right Wilby, it Pat Wilby got hurt at a, at, at a coffin factory fire in the Bronx. Uh, a hydrant connection blew off in him and head. So Morris became the captain of the 20, uh, 69 engine when I, for me. And then the captain, Mike Finan of 28, had a heart attack. Morris went across the floor. Mm. And Patty Brown came back as the captain of 28. When I got there, I mean, 69. Patty Brown was a lieutenant in, six, in, in 28 when I got there. And a funny story about him coming back. I was talking to a friend of mine. And Patty was going already. He got promoted. And he was, he was being the family liaison for uh, Vina Drennan. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. You know? So... Uh, he calls me, I, I you know, what's Patty's plans? And a uh, guy said, no, I go, would you ever be interested in coming back to 69 engine? He says, I don't know. Uh, hang on. He hangs up. Two seconds later, Patty Brown calls me. He goes, hey, Timmy, what's going on? I go, hey, Cap, what's up? There's Patty Brown on the phone. And he goes, you, and he actually asked, you guys would want me in 69 engine? Yeah, no, no, I'd want uh, uh, Sister and Horace. Of course, <laughs> you know, you know. So, uh, so he starts talking and he tells Vina Brand the one thing he wants is to go back to 69 engine captain. And he came back uh, to wow. 69. And then, you know, he, he was he was an engine. He was a great off. I loved him. I mean, I went to a lot of fires with him and I'll never forget him. Timster, one more room, Timster. And he was a fucking liar because it was always more than one room. <laughs> he would always tell me one more room, Timster, one more room. And it was nice. always more than one room. But uh, he ended up going to three truck, and we all know what happened after that, you know. Yeah, man. So. Yeah. But and yeah, what, I worked you, for what, what do you think made you gravitate towards the engine as opposed to you know going? To, most guys want to go to the truck, but there are the few guys who love the engine and stay in the engine. You know, I I I, I don't know if I could say one thing, um, um, but the one thing I would say is I was good at it. You know what I mean? I was good at it. Right. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I mean, I, I had my paper and to go to 28. And, you know, uh, they took a couple guys that had less time than me, less time in the company than me. And so I had it out with the captain at the time. And um, he goes, oh, I'll put it in. You'll go to next order. And I go, you know what? I'm just going to stay in, in 69. I mean, I'll get promoted out of 69 engine. And, and you know, I was good at it. And, you know, and I made it. I made it my point to know as much as I could about it, you know, mm -hmm. and. You know, so, it's funny that you say that, Tim, because <clears throat> I kind of thought, like, I did my 30-day detail. I was I was signed to 117, and then I did my 30 days in 316 engine, which was a uh, single engine, quiet, uh, you know, tucked away little place. But they back then, they were catching a lot of work. They still do good some work, you know, uh, by the airport over there. And um, mm. I caught three first two jobs on the nozzle, right? And... But they had mostly private. Dorm. I mean, they have some six-story stuff going on there when they go towards like 307 or. Uh, but mm. most of them are around the firehouses, are smaller buildings. And I had one basement job and two first floor jobs. And literally, I had, I think it was uh, Lieutenant Bean Keeney. I don't know what his first name was, but he was. <clears throat> he might have allegedly always had like uh, red wine on the table. Allegedly. Ate, but you know, but he was old school guy, and he just basically dragged me down the stairs here and there. But. My experience with that was I would get to the room. It would look great. I'd open the nozzle for five seconds, <laughs> close the line. All right, that's it. Pack it up. You know, it was just I always had one room job. I never had like a, yeah. a job where it would <clears throat> motivate me to really <laughs> want to be, you know, like three, four, five, you know, whatever it is. You know? so, so up there is like and the one thing about that place was, you know, and, and 69 and, 16 and 28 was off the chart. They, they were off the hook. As far as what was going on up there at the time, but we were busy. But but they did hold you accountable. You know, and I remember one night we had a real good job right off of Seventh uh, Avenue, right at the corner of One Four One Street, and it was out eight windows when we turned the corner. Uh, I had the nozzle, and and it was probably one of the best nozzle jobs I ever had. We had the entire apartment. We had six rooms. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you ever put out six rooms? No. <laughs> so I got to the fifth room, and I ran out of gas. So I handed it off to the back of man. I said, "Listen, I just you know take it." So we get back to the firehouse and, you know, we go to the top floor and, and that was the thing. You went up and talked about the fire. You know, why'd you do And they would hold you accountable. I mean, literally they were like, they would go to the OV. How'd you get through? How'd you do this? How'd you? 
So they, and I'm thinking when they get to me, they're going to sing songs about me. I mean, I put out fucking five rooms of fire. <laughs> Why didn't you get the last room? <laughs> exactly. They get to me and they, my, my, I walk out of there with a limp. My asshole hurts so yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, like, I'm, I, I almost want, like, I, you never give that. That's your fucking fire. You never mm. give up that nozzle. I don't care how tired you are. And by the way, I'm going, it was five rooms. You know, like, yeah. and they didn't care. And, I mean, that yeah, was you talk about well, How long it takes to get to that spot, right? Like, so, yeah. like, I've seen, you know, I was the boss at those types yeah. of jobs, but I was never in control yeah. of the line myself for that yeah. type of and job. And it's right? different because the vacants, mm. five rooms was a bunch. Yeah, they're open. I mean, right? You know, they're the, open. the vacants yeah, yeah. were they're easy because it was right. all fire. But when you had an occupied building, you know, you get you get more than three rooms. You know, you you got to work. You got to work for it. Yeah, and uh, you know the vacants were easy, but they were great training. But they held you accountable, man. They, you know, yeah, I, I especially if it's up, if it's up on the sixth floor, you, you you know, you might be spent by the time you get to line and position. You're tired. <laughs> you you know? Brooklyn and Queens guys ever see a six story building? What is that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you ever see one that big? They're real. They they they. they Listen, you get that first, big, I've only seen a couple like of them on fire and a I'm bunch sorry. of firemen standing in front of it taking photos. <laughs> Two story looks like a six story to me, bro. You know, two stories going to give you guys a nosebleed. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice, nice. Yeah. So, but funny, funny stuff up there. You know, I was up. We had a vacant up on 168th Street one day. We were third due. We were on a floor above, and Eddie Anzalone had the nozzle. And a guy named Killian was the boss at the time. And he says, Timmy, there's a hole right inside the door here. He goes, just, just stay here and make sure nobody goes into that hole in the floor. So I'm there and I'm feeding line to them guys. And, and I'm telling everybody, hey, listen, watch out for the hole. Watch out for the hole. Watch out for the hole. And all of a sudden, you know, somebody must have got burned or something. They ran out of gas. And Killian goes, Timmy, I need you up here. So what do I do? I stand up. What do I do? Right in the fucking Going hole. The hole. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So nobody helps me, of course. The guy walked out. He goes, hey, Timmy, look out for the hole. Hope you look out for the hall, yeah. Tim. <laughs> oh, funny stuff. I, 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 you know, oh, funny, funny, funny stuff. We, we like, uh, I, I, um, Patty Moran was a really, really great guy. I love that guy. You know, unfortunately, we lost him to Lou Gehrig's disease, but you know, he was he was really a, a great show for. I loved him, and uh, we had a cover in Mother's Day one night, and um, we get an ERS box. We used to get them all the time, and. Um, for seventh and one four seven, um, so we turn out and they call us on the phone they, on the radio and they say, "Listen, oh, we're starting to get phone calls. You know, you're probably going to chop." So we go out to seventh and we turn on one four seven street and there's an old law tenement in the middle of the block, and the entire building's got smoke coming off. No fire, but every window's got smoke. <laughs> and uh, so we look at it and Patty grabs the mic, the radio, the phone, and he goes six nine in Manhattan, urgent. And then go ahead sixty nine. He goes. 1075 the box. We got hamsters on a habit trail. <laughs> just oh, like my God. oh my God. Everybody's like, what, what did he just uh, say? <laughs> Write that I mean, one down, Ruffy. Hurry up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny, funny, funny stuff. Shit. A lot of stuff. You know, I was with I was with Mike, Mike Hayes, another great guy. He ended up, we got promoted just almost we studied together, got promoted together. He went to 38 truck. I went to 88 engine. A very, very dear friend of mine to this day. Uh, both of his kids are on the job. So we go to 141 Street for a top floor of an old lawn, and he's up there. He's got the door, and I got the nozzle. Actually, there's a picture um, of it. Um, I, I got to let me see if I can bring the pictures up here. But, you know, I get water, and Mike looks at me, and he's holding the door, and he goes, I, he goes, you ready? I said, I'm ready, Mike. He goes, you sure? I go, yeah, I'm ready. And he says, okay, one thing. I go, what? He goes, you're going to get burned. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, like now the nozzle goes limp. <laughs> like everything else does. And I'm like, I go, what? He goes, you're going to get burned. Just like that. So I go, get the fuck out of here. He opens the door. I go in. I'm in the door two seconds. Fire both sides of the door. Front and rear. You know, the old law tenement, the flats, the railroads, this way. And this. So as soon as I get in the door, this side of my face, I get fucked. I get burned. So I, uh, and uh, I'm out in the street sitting in the back of BMS. Mike walks up. He hits me in the shoulder. He goes, told you. <laughs> like oh, hey, do we have any pictures that we passed up from this time let's, let's well he, you know, he just has so, to tell me what number to yeah play. um i just gotta find it let's see if you go to let's see where there's one of them you know the ems trying to find there's a, a, a 11 is a good picture 10 4 coming up <clears throat> there you go yeah so that's john newell in the center patty moran next to him uh, Billy Morris ended up going the 123 truck, I think it was. 
Billy Morris used to sit in the firehouse and he'd go, he goes, you know what? If they gave out medals for putting out these fires, I'd be a fucking general. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's John Newell in his center of the picture. Probably the hands down, the best guy I ever worked for. Hands down. Without, I love that guy. I just, uh, I just had dinner with him last week. He, he's got a place down here, but John Noel for me is, is he's, you know, everybody has that guy, you know, and I, right. I worked with Patty Brown and Morris, but you know, really, <clears throat> truly, truly, you know, yeah, he was, so you he connect with too, you know? Yeah. So, and that fire I was just talking about is going to be like 42 and 43. Well, uh, where I got burned. Oh, okay. Yeah. 10, four. Gotcha. And actually 40, if you go to 44, there's a picture of the EMS working on my face. Oh yeah. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's Killian right there. And, I told you. Yeah, I, I told, told you. you. <laughs> Trying to get burned. I so, you know, Mike was funny. We were at a church fire one day and it was coming in the windows. So he gets up there and I, and I got the nozzle and we're trying to keep the fire from, from getting into the tenement. So he takes his table, he breaks the legs off us and he puts it over the window. So I'm breaking his chops. I'm going, you know, that table might have meant something. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, you just, you, you fucking people shit up. So after the fire, the lady comes in, she breaks down, she starts crying and she says, that table is the last thing that her brother gave her before he died. I looked at him like that. <laughs> told you. Oh. <laughs> told you. Told you, bro. I told you. <clears throat> told you. That the same job? That's the job where I got burned. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 yeah, laughing. 42, yeah, he's laughing at you right there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> told yeah, you. I ain't doing any paperwork oh, look, for he, him. Got, he got burned. Half his <laughs> face got burned. He got burned. Yeah, real funny. Real fucking funny. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, Very nice. Yeah, it was a great place. I mean, like you know, we, we had a lot of fun up there. Went through a shitload of fires. They actually were filming a um an episode of New York Undercover. Remember that show? Yeah, New York Undercover. So they were filming in the firehouse, and they were on 148th Street from one and the other for three blocks. Both sides of the street were vacant buildings. You know, when I got to 69, we had 382 vacant buildings in our administrative district. Wow. So the they used to go up there and set up these buildings to for the movies for vacants. I guess the locals got pissed off about it because the building that was directly behind it on 149th Street that was vacant while they were setting that one up, they proved that they weren't as good as they were. And that was a third alarm when they were there. <laughs> they torched the place. So well, I, yeah, I mean, it was, was easy, easy BI over there. Ruffy would have had no problem oh, yeah. with BI over there, right, bro? <laughs> BI. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, so we had a question. We had a question from the super chat before, and it was, uh, "Do you have any Stu Loeb stories from uh, from '69 Engine?" So, so Stu Loeb didn't get there till after I was gone, but I did end up working. I got lifted to '65 Engine before I got promoted right after 9/11. So Stu Loeb was a um, a boss there, and actually, when when I got assigned, it was like this, this is Rob Fenty, Stu Loeb, and myself, '69, '75, and '88. There was this twisted thing of who was put in for what. And Stu had put in for a 69, 88, and 75. But Rob Fenty was getting 75. And so Mo Renan, who was in the 7th Division, said, well, I'm not endorsing Plett for 88. I'm endorsing Stu Loeb. And it, luckily, Stu Loeb ended up going to 69, ended up going to 88, and Rob Fenty went to 65. But Stu was a good guy. He's retired now. He went back up. To, he's from Dunkirk, New York. I think he ended up working on trades. I think he got sick, actually, too, after he retired. Yeah. It was a and good then, guy. And, and then the other one about, hey, Pete, hold uh, on. Before you get there, Pete, you breezed yeah, yeah. over the part where you got lifted. Do we want to talk about why you got lifted? <laughs> <laughs> it was right after 9 11. They lifted everybody on the lieutenant. Uh, oh, okay. I thought you'd yeah. for another reason. It wasn't I thought, anything. I thought, yeah, I thought, I like, I'm Louis I lift. I it it's not like you finger poked a chief or anything. No, nah, you weren't paying finger poking a deputy. Allegedly. Boy, yeah. I don't know. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> So the other okay, question it was, was one time, but I really needed the ride. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm lying. I didn't need the ride. <laughs> the, the, uh, the other question was, uh, tell us, the, they, they want to know about uh, Braveheart. I can't tell the Braveheart story. Okay, good. That's it. Done. Nah. Oh, I had that like three times. I saw that. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, well, I, I know. That's I, that. I, I just, the Braveheart story is nah, moving nope. on. one that's of those. On. I'll stay at the top floor. Moving on. No problem. Moving. Yeah. It's a great story, but I can't tell a great no, story. Maybe uh, after you know, I'll tell it, you know, we had, you know, like we had this potato launcher at the firehouse, and you know, one afternoon it was. Really it always slow. starts out with, you know, we had this potato launcher at the firehouse. <laughs> you see a potato launcher? <laughs> Nothing though? good is coming out of this Did story. You, no, it wasn't bad. Did you ever see one though? There's a cool. I do. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we had, had one. one at the yeah. firehouse too. So allegedly, so did you, yeah. So 
you know, we're out back and we're like, oh, well, you know, like we're, we're want to see how the thing works. And we actually were going to put it on the rig for the OV to take the top floor windows. That yeah, was yeah, one of the things we, you know, yeah, we got. We told work. Well, that's what we told the chief. He didn't think it was that funny. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> so now we're outside and we're and now outside of 69. There's these 20 story projects all over the place. So we're firing and we're having a ball. I mean, it's hysterical. The guys have never seen it. And, and we're firing everything, you know, like potatoes, apples, oranges, roast beef, everything we could put in this thing, we're firing out. So finally, the chief comes outside. Work really good. Yeah, and he blows a gasket. He goes, you, you idiots, this shit's coming down somewhere. Somewhere, like, absolutely. We don't, even, we don't even think about it. So just when we get a, we, we get a run. <laughs> we get a get run. run for somebody killed by a roast beef. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the guy in the top floor of the project was going, God, please send food in the roast beef. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but we get a run. And so we come out, we, we turn on the 7th Avenue in the direction that we were firing shit. And there's shit all over the road. There's potatoes, there's everything. And everybody's in the street looking up. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Like I said, nothing good. Uh, yeah. yeah and potato gun, nothing good. Yeah, you can't start like a story out with potato gun. It ends up good, bro. <laughs> what happens? Uh, it, was, it is it was funny. Just, it was it, funny. Like, it seemed, like, it seemed like, funny then. What did you use? Well, hands, most did you use the hand, most hand, things. Hairspray? Or what did you, you use? Hairspray? Or Hairspray. The yeah. Aquanet, man. That stuff yeah, worked. I know it. Man. That stuff was great. Allegedly. Oh, you know? Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Yep. <laughs> so they used to do this uh, this sixth division talent show. I don't know if you've ever heard about it. No. I think no. Bernardo might have talked about it. But it's six division talent show. So, you know, we were going to do it. We were going to do the Wizard of Oz. 6928 was going to go and do the Wizard of Oz. We never did it because everybody wanted to be Dorothy. So we couldn't, you know, <laughs> we were fighting over who was going to be Dorothy. Oh, jeez. Okay. So, but, but we were going to do the Rescue Kitchen. And you guys probably won't like this. But we were going to put a table up on the, on the stage. And all of us were going to sit around. And we we're going to have an oven. And it, the oven would go bing, and the guy would go. Uh, he would go up and get his helmet out of the oven, and say, <laughs> "Jimmy, you're up." And he'd put his helmet in the oven. Nice. And then we'd have the tones go off, and everybody would jump up, and then you'd hear, "Take up rescue," and they'd all sit. <laughs> you could go ten eight. Awesome. Uh, take, take up. You could go ten eight. Uh, it's just funny, nice. funny stuff, man. Funny, funny, funny. I do story. remember the chief talking about that, actually, now that you say that. I do. Yeah, it uh, it went by the wayside. There were some acts that really weren't that uh, approved. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, those days are gone. You can't do that stuff no yeah, more. Yeah, no, yeah, way. Yeah, no, no. no way, no, no. how. But uh, uh, um, 69 who got, was up, right who got up there by you quicker? Who, who'd you have? Uh, 41? Did 41 get in there quicker? 41 you? was right over there. And actually, um, um, John Norman, who, who covered in the 16th, he asked me to go to 41 Engine. And and if you ask him when he's going to be on, yep. So you ask him. He said, who, "Just ask him who's the only guy ever to turn you down." And he'll say, "Because I told him no." Uh, and I said, "Why do I want to go across that bridge to come back to fires that I'm first doing?" <laughs> That's true. It's true. And, and you know, high insight. Hmm. I, I probably should have done it. You know, in the end, it probably would have been better for my career. But I have no regrets at all. I mean, I was going to tons of fires, tons, tons of fires. And, uh, you know, man. and the, that, the, those chiefs, you know, Griffity, Cassidy, you know, Kenny and, Visca uh, Kenny and Visconti, yeah. they, you know, they only used the rescue when they needed them. They, they were, you know, we had a fire one time when 41 was, and uh, Griffin was the chief. And they were, they were pulling everybody out. We had a frame, one of the only frames we had up there. And uh, the place was taken off. So we pulled everybody out and 41 wouldn't come out of the building. So he's on the radio. And, and Griffin was an old time you know, South Bronx squad two, you know, he was one of the guys that was trapped in the Jennings street collapse. I don't know if you ever heard of the Jennings street collapse. So there was like six guys trapped and Griffin was one of those guys. It was in like 72 or 73. And uh, he was one of the guys that were trapped for a long period of time in that collapse. So he was an old hardened warriors guy. And uh, so he wants everybody out of the building. 40, we come out, 41 will come out. He goes, Hey, 41, I want you out of the building. Okay, give me a second chief. So he finally goes in and gets them. And brings them out. And he says, you guys really want to do something? They're like, yeah. He goes, okay, stretch a two and a half, two buildings down to the top, to the roof and stay there. till." So they must have stretched 30 links of hose. And they sat there for the whole fire. And they realized, and the and boss goes, got the message. Just like that. <laughs> they never did it again, you know. But those are those guys, you know. Visconti was, my God, you know. They, they were just. But Visconti, is he the bear? They used to call him the bear. He was a nice guy, really nice guy. 
Well, Kennedy, they called Frankenstein. Visconti might have been the bear, but he was a really nice guy. But he was like the if 14th you were, division, too, right? Deputy in the 14th? No, no, he went to the third division. Oh, okay. Different he was in 50 2. Uh, oh, they shit. all followed each other around in their careers. They all 82, 31, 50, and then they went up to Harlem and then went back to the Bronx and then they came back to Harlem together. You know, but uh, th those guys were, you know, Visconti was, you know, just a gentleman. I mean, I watched him throw a chief out of the fire, a deputy out of the firehouse because he wanted a roll call. I'm like, oh my God, what's happening here? He threw the deputy out. You're not, you're not getting it tonight. You know, come back tomorrow. You can have it, but not tonight. You're not getting it tonight. Yeah. So those guys, those guys, when, you know, when you went to a fire, I mean, I don't know if you ever, and you came back and you didn't do your best. You actually felt like you let your father. Yeah. Die. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. About you know it. what I mean? You know, when, it, when Cassie had to pull you aside and say, hey, listen, we let a lot of shit go by here. All we yeah, ask gotta, is to put the fires out. Right, you got to do the right thing, right? And uh, when you don't, you know, we're sitting in the kitchen like you felt like you let your dad down, man. It, it sucked, you know? So, yeah. But, yeah, that, that hey, place. Hey, Ruffy, who was the guy that we had on? Uh, was it Solka when he said that uh, he knew certain guys to put the work and one of them was Timmy Klett because we told him we were going to have him on the show? Who was that? Was that Solka? That was Solka, yeah, yeah. yeah. He Salka, got that right? story way wrong, though. He really did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's getting a little of the Alzheimer's, you know what I mean? But <laughs> oh my goodness, it's, no, but it's close because I it, it is pretty close. I walked up and I told him, I go, Chief, I'm second on a second alarm, and you know, like you know, I look at the place and, I, and I'm always ready to go to work. I tell guys, you know, we when I was in '88, we had a 1088 signal. You know, I would tell my guys, hey, 1088, and they knew that we're going to get a line, no matter what, I'm getting them a line, and that's what you know. A lot of guys in '88 wanted to work in my groups because I always got a line, and uh, this is one of those lights. I looked at the the guy with the nozzle. I go, hey. Make sure you know where you can get a line because we're going to go to work here. So I walk up and I told Salka, second and a second alarm. So I hear the rescue tell him, hey, listen, we need a line on top floor right away. So he turns around and, and he's looking. He goes, Timmy, come here. Just like that. And I go, chief, 90's ahead of me. Just He looks right at 90. And this is the part he leaves out. He looks right at the boss 90. He goes, I don't fucking care. Just like that. I go, okay. <laughs> I walk by him. I'm going, sorry, bro. Sorry. You know. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Swing even better. He was uh, he was an interesting. I, I loved working with him, and you know, like like uh, I got a ton of stories. Like you know, for well, I him. saw that picture where he was telling you he had his yeah. finger right. And there. another, another thing, thing, another thing, Clut. Yeah. Another thing. Clet. You know what it was? He came and I didn't. Leave, you know, so I would tell the guys, "Hey, Salka's coming over tonight." So the guys were like, oh, they would get mad. I'm like, listen, he's just coming. Whenever I worked, they knew the. You know, either Jonas would come or Salka would come. So Salka's coming over. So I would tell him, listen, just hide all the food and he'll leave. If there's no food for him to eat, he'll go. It's like, you know, it's like the deer isn't going to sit under your, your thing if there's no food there. So they would put out a little bowl, and I hope he's not listening. They'd put about a whole little bowl, a little bowl of peanuts out. So he'd come and eat all the peanuts. And when they were gone, he'd look and he'd leave. <laughs> you had him down, Pat. Look at that. <laughs> and I would just tell him, don't leave any food out because he's a, you know, he's like a scavenger, you know. So uh, <laughs> he's gonna kill me. That's uh, your boy. One night he's there. One night he's there, and um, we get a run for this class three. And I, I always thought about complacency, you know, being that guy. It's a place we go to all the time. But usually, when he's coming from Tremont Avenue, he's farther away. So now he's right behind us. I pull up and, and the guy say, Lou, you want the roll ups? I go, nah, this is nothing. The guy's out in front to school. So the, the custodian's out there. I throw my coat over my arm, pop my head on because I'm a salty bastard. You know, I start walking down the block and uh, the guy runs into the building. I go, boy, that's strange. He never does that. Usually he says, oh, they burnt some toast. So I get in the building. I'm looking around. I don't realize Salk is right behind me. I don't realize it all. So I'm looking for the guy and I get to this hallway. I look down the hallway and, and there's the guy and he's pointing down the hallway like this. And there's a black wall of smoke rolling down the hallway. And I, I got my coat of mine on my helmet. I go, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh, fuck. So I turn around and who's behind me? Salk. And he goes, Timmy, there's smoke in there. I go, I know. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Hold on. I just got to put my stuff on. <laughs> I got it. I got it, Chief. That's great. Uh, we get ahead of ourselves. So you, you, you uh, let's see. So you work in 69 from 92 to 2002. You spend a good 10 years there, a good decade. You get promoted in 2002 and you're signed to Battalion 20. Tim, uh, we were in the seventh class, division. Were we when we got promoted? I think uh, I was it, when, when you get promoted. I think I thought I was June of 02. You might have been right after me. I got uh, my well, 
So I was supposed to get promoted and I deferred for a month because my mother was very sick. And she ended up, the day before my promotion was my mother's funeral. Oh, so I got my mother's funeral, I got promoted. And the next day was the day they took me the last thing out of the trade center, the, the like May 30th. So yeah, I was yeah, in I that. that. Yeah. Uh, so we were in the next. So they were doing, uh, when I saw the dates on there, they were doing a class a month, I guess then. Is that what? So my, my, I got my first tour in Firehouse was July 4th. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. I was in Flips June of 2002. We went and that, and they, but, they did, that. but they did uh, like 30 and 30. They were, they were separated. You know, it was a morning uh, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Class. That's what I was thinking. I remember that. I got promoted by Mike Champo, Joe Bailey. We, we commuted oh, together. Champo. We're going to get him no, on the I show. Did you retire yet, Champo? Not. No, we got to get him on. We see him at the shows all the time. Yeah, and he, he doesn't shut up. <laughs> I ain't saying that, bro. <laughs> I, listen, I love Mike Champo. I, he, he, you know what? He is the. He, I love Mike. He's the best. You know. We talked to him at uh, FDIC. Yeah. At like, well, actually, we didn't talk to him. He talked to us. Yes. <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay, you can talk in a second. Give me a minute. Right? Oh shit. All right, so you, get, <laughs> so you get assigned to UFO to a lot of 50. Should I read yeah. it in parentheses here? Should I even read you that? Read it. <laughs> you read it. I needed to escape that place. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Listen, I, you know what? Listen, it wasn't where I wanted to be. It was very slow. The guys were great. You know, we got a new we got a new hearse tool. And I said, hey, you know, I said to the guys, I go, you got a place you have ADVs out here? He goes, we had two last night down on Ver, uh, Zariga Avenue. I go, well, let's go. And we went at noon, and at 5 o'clock, they were still cutting it. And they said to me, like, no one ever takes us out to use the tools. I'm like, stay as long as you want, bro. I don't give a shit. You know, the guys – but it was just slow. So uh, Jimmy Carney, who was in 69 with me, and uh, we kind of ran a lot of their stuff together. We ran uh, we ran their centennial. Calls me up, and we're doing – he's doing the memorial services for 9-11. And he says, Timmy, I need you to come down. Uh, I know you can help me. So I go to headquarters. I take a four-month – uh, detail headquarters and you have, anybody ever get detail headquarters any of you guys no Did you ever work down there no so it's like being in jail you know that right <laughs> well because nobody talks to anybody and you get in the elevator and the door closed and the guy leaned him and he goes what are you in for just like that <laughs> <laughs> I, I was poking the chief <laughs> well, yeah i finger banged the chief you know? <laughs> So they're like, what do you mean I volunteered? And they all looked at me like, what? They turned white as a ghost. You know, he goes, Well, how long are you how long are you here for? Like, yeah, my stint say you know, four months. You know, I <laughs> think it was crazy. But um, we did the memorial service. I was the guy in charge of transportation. So we rented every limo, every eight passengers limo from Springfield, Massachusetts to Wilmington, Delaware. We had every one. Yeah, I spent $1.5 million. On uh, rental field. And it was very interesting. I found out who had power and who didn't. Because I was working on the eighth floor. Ooh. And uh, so they send me to talk to this guy Esposito from the cops, the patrol. And I'm a lieutenant for four months. So I'm talking to the chief of patrol for the PD about what we're going to do for the um, memorial services. And we wanted, when they came out of 31st Street, we wanted them to go south on 8th Avenue, which is a northbound street for like six blocks because we figured all the out of town guys would be there. And we wanted the families to see how many guys were there. And uh, so we get there and, the, and Esposito looks right at me and he goes, we're not even talking about going the wrong way in a time. You're missing. No. I go, well, listen, it's on my list. He goes, you're not doing it. The logistics, you're not doing it. So we talked about everything else and the cops didn't want to do anything for us. They didn't. Yeah. So I get back to headquarters and, and Lee ILP comes up to me. And he goes, you going uh, south on 8th Avenue? I go, no, Lee, we're not. And he's fucking laid into me. He's screaming at me. I'm like, Lee, I'm a fucking lieutenant here, bro. You know, I mean, you you sent me down there to talk to a chief. So he goes in and he's yelling at nine, bro, screaming at him. And 15 minutes later, he comes back. He looks at me, he goes, you're going south on 8th Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was interesting, you know, like, you know, renting all these cars and firemen being firemen and how we did it and, uh, you know, how we, the logistics of that whole thing at Madison Square Garden. Most people don't realize what it took to put that on. You know, you know, call me that morning. So I'm in charge of transportation. That was some show, man. Holy shit. So I get a call. I get, I get a cell phone. Everybody's got it. That's getting that we're bringing there. So every family, you know, we had 300 and I think it was 58 families. Cause remember we had the father's day fire too, cause there was no memorial mass for them. We had, so we had all those, we had a couple other guys. 
and then we had the 343. So I have a phone and everybody's got that number. If there's any problem with the cars, they're calling me. So I get a call and I said, oh, who is this? He goes, yeah, it's um, um, Pete Gancy. And I'm like, what? And I almost said, get the fu fuck. It's out his of here. son. <laughs> it's his son. The car, the only car that didn't show up was Pete Gancy's car. Oh, oh shit. Goodness gracious. You got to be kidding me, right? So, but we had planned for that. So I said, stay there. I got car. I called the. We had we had cars staged just for that reason. So I called the central dispatch. I go send every car to that address right now, and we ended up getting you know so. But it was when was that? That was two thousand two October two thousand two. October, yeah, that was some freaking yeah. concert, man. So I I did it. I went there in August and I stayed. To the <clears> day. Day. Um, and and so you paid your you paid your penance, and what happens? You get the well. <laughs> oh no 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 so i get out and so i get back to the seventh division i go to 84 engine for a stint uh i go to 91 engine uh 90 90 engine for a stint and then this guy the chief in the division calls me and says listen you're the junior guy in the division you're going to the rock for a year holy shit so i says hey chief you know i just took a detail he goes well call whoever you got um you know you're the junior guy you're going to the rock Every so time I luckily, out, somebody else, huh? They pulled me back in. <laughs> yeah. So luckily, somebody else took it, and I ended up not going. And then in like, in like February of 2003, I was UFO and 88 engine, and I've been there ever since. So I worked there a few times. Running. 88. It was like being huh? in a museum. You've been there. I've worked yeah, there. I, I covered there a few times. Yeah. Yeah. That whole that you know that whole <laughs> battalion, um, the 18th battalion, their 88. Uh, you know, is a music, the guys, and, and they do that all on their own. We don't have to tell them to do a thing. Those guys, um, you know, they they keep that place the way it was. The beds that are in that firehouse are the original beds. Really? The okay, have, you, have you, the you ever seen frames. it? No. Well, I was going to ask you, what do you mean, what do you mean it, by it's, museum? It's like, <clears> it's like museum going is. back in time. It's like yeah. it's, it's immaculate. Like a firehouse, like you've been in is, you know, it's somewhat dirty, you know. This yeah. place is immaculate. No, it's immaculate. really? Yeah. Are they now a single engine, or they no 38, 38. truck is with them. Come oh, 38 truck. <clears throat> so 38 and 88, think, right? Think about the 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 cleanest firehouse you've ever been to, and then put that one on steroids. Really? It, yeah, it's and, and no, like you know they're very dedicated. I think 23 engine is like kind of similar to that, but 23 engine is like that. <clears throat> no. Yeah, it's wow. they. You know, they paint the decorative chrome on the stairs. Every yeah, the staircase is incredible. They got all the pictures going up the wall, right? If yeah, I remember. it's uh, the, you know, and, and, they, <coughs> and you know, I was lucky. I got there and there was a guy there named uh, Vinny Albanese. You know, and he he wanted to do thirty eight years in thirty eight truck. Got there in sixty eight in thirty eight wow, truck. He, shit. And he stayed there his whole time. And you know, that guy mm. was like took care of that rig. And you know, one of the things you know, like you know, that's not an old school mm. thing, but it was his thing. And like that rig was immaculate. You, you right, thirty eight truck was immaculate. But to him, it was still a tool. At a fire, if he had to flatten the tires, and he did it one day, he was backing into an alley and flattened all the tires on the officer's side. And somebody said, I thought you, you know, you you keep the rig nice. He goes, I do. But at the end of the day, it's still just a tool. Right. You know? he, didn't get, he didn't let that get in his way. He didn't let that get in his way. And, you know, like Callan was a chief up there. And he goes, hey, do you, you guys wash your rig? He goes, every day. And Callan goes, come on. He goes, chief, we wash it every day. And they do. I showed a picture. I had a picture somebody sent me of 38 truck <clears throat> the other day. I, I think it was probably from the 80s. And for, for an 80s rig, it looked incredible. You know, had the little yeah. stars painted on so it. Their patch, their patch um, if you guys don't know about it, um, there was a guy, Louis Fagazi, um, and he was in the 4th yeah. Armored Division. So if you look up the 4th Armored Division's patch, that's kind of the basis of 38 truck's patch. They, Is that, that what Timmy, Timmy Kelly was from, Roof? Timmy Kelly was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was from there, yeah. Right, I thought so. There was nine, another though. guy who was the captain of 88. He wasn't there when I was there. Tough Timmy Gallagher. I don't yeah, know if you yeah. ever heard of Tough Tim. Yeah, yeah. so who was just talking about? Was that? Uh, Probably Dan Potter. Potter was talking about him. Yeah. And um, uh, I can't remember all the guys anymore. The, the old-timer from uh, the Pipes. He was the Rescue 3 guy. He was talking about some Tough Timmy Gallagher. Oh, Marty Mateague. Tough Timmy yeah, Gallagher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. So he used to come to the Christmas party. So I'm there. I've been there a few years and I'm talking to his daughter and his daughter was some shit store. 
So I'm saying, yeah, I know Timmy Klett. She goes, oh, you're here? I go, yeah, I'm a lieutenant. I've been here. She goes, Timmy? Oh, so you're the new tough Timmy? Hey, Dad. <laughs> no. I'm like, oh, fuck, this guy shit no. <laughs> Listen, no. I said Jimmy. It's Jimmy. <laughs> so, the you know, tea I, is I, silent. I, yeah, you know, I, I had a you know, I, I would have it out with chiefs. You know, I would, you know, you know, like everybody, you know, any officer, you know, you, you, you protected the guys. And I always told guys, you know how much stuff we stop coming down. But this guy, the stories. So what he did one time, there was a chief in the 18th that called and told tough Timmy. He goes, listen, I need you to move some chauffeurs around because all the chauffeurs are in this groups and we're detailing chauffeurs, the 88 and tough Timmy, I guess the story I heard says, okay, I'll get right on that. Hangs up the phone, goes downstairs, 11 bells, bing, 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 roll call. Tells all the guys, go upstairs, take the desk, the typewriter at the time, and the filing cabinets, and strap it to the rig. So they strap it to the rig. They drive to the 18th battalion. You could do he my puts, job. He puts the office in. And she goes, what are you doing? He goes, you want to run my job? Here it is. You want to run my company? Here it is. And yeah, drive the- <laughs> I knew yeah. you were going to say that. That's awesome. I wish I had those kind of – I mean, I got balls, but not like that. I mean, I like, had balls. <laughs> yeah, because I'd be in Staten Island somewhere. <laughs> Take those muscles the fuck out of here. We're looking for balls as much. We're balls for. we're looking for. <laughs> it's balls. I used to, listen, I used to try to get lifted all the time. I was down, remember the kaleidoscope training? I shouldn't tell this story, but remember, remember the kaleidoscope training? I do, yeah, remember, yeah. Remember the posters they put on the walls and you had to yeah, pick yeah, one? Yeah. So so I'm down there and, and I'm with Sean Genovese. That. Remember Sean Genovese from 41? Yes, of course. Great dude, yeah. man, love him. Really so Sean's great. next to me and he's got some time and we're looking around and it got to be a hundred guys in the room and they put the posters up. And they say, you know, pick one that you'd most want to be. So I look at Sean. I go, I'm not playing this game. This is ridiculous because we were iceberging. So we stand there and she says, hey, you, you got to pick one. I said, I did. I picked me. I, I, I like me. So she's mad. She says to Sean, she goes, well, what about you? He goes, well, I like me too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so they, go, they go around the room. They go around the room, right? And they talk to everybody. And then she looks right at me and she says, now I want you to pick the one you would least want to be I'm like, fuck. So I look at Sean and go, can I stand there? Cause I, I don't want to be a squad lieutenant. That, that's what I said to him. And he laughs, <laughs> but we go to the Pakistani guy. Right. And remember there was the Pakistani yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, the yeah. drug addict. Yeah, yeah. The black, and then the gay unemployed executive. Right. Remember that? Yes. yes There's yes. three guys at the gay unemployed executive. So she goes, okay, we'll start with you guys. And I'm like, this is such, I'm a fireman, man. So she says to the one guy, why wouldn't you want to be the gay unemployed executive? So he says, can I be honest? And uh, she goes, yeah, absolutely. He goes, well, I don't like penis. Right? Everybody <laughs>, laughs. So, so my hand goes right up. There's like anything this. wrong with that. Yeah, my hand goes right up like this, you know? And she goes, yes. I go, I want to know how we found that out. Just like that. Right? <laughs> yeah, they tried it once. Right? Right? So Sean <laughs> leans, over, leans over to me and goes, I hope you like working in Staten Island. Just like that. <laughs> Could you imagine what they dealt with in there all the time? Oh, my America. God. Remember the guy? Remember the, uh, the the bow tie lawyer? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. So he, he had the plastic cup with the pencils in it. Yeah. And he for notes, he would shake it like this, walking around. So I go, yeah, 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 come over here. And I put a quarter in it. It's like <laughs> <laughs> and the guy behind me, the same thing. He leans forward. He goes, you like Staten Island? Keep that up. Just like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Staten Italy. Oh, man. Funny shit, man. Funny, funny, funny stuff. You catch any good work up at 88 or what, man? Oh, you know what? I, I did really, mm-hmm. really, really good up there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was I was always lucky with fires. I don't know why. You know, I was able to do it well. I gave a second on arrival once. We had five frames burning. Um, my son was actually supposed to ride with me. My son, Daniel, who's, uh, you know, we talked in a pre so He's down in Baltimore now. And uh, my younger son just got hired down in Charleston. Connor, he's going to be down in Charleston soon. So, uh but yeah, I, I did very well there. I can't complain. You know, um, you know, and the guys were second to none. They they really were. I mean, like, um, you know, everything I asked them to do. We had a cellar fire one time, and and I and I and I say this without any problem at all. There's there's only five engines that would have gone down those stairs. And, and I mean that. I mean the fire medics at the top of the stairs had complete possession of the cellar and the stairway. But we, we really had no choice. They said there were people upstairs, we had no other way down. So I told the guy, uh, you know, a guy named Al Torado, a, a young fireman, and he's had some great fires in his career. And I told him, I go, listen, this is what I need you to do. And we're going to have to flow. And I said, I'm going to be right behind. I told the backup man, stay at the top of the stairs. When I get down, I need you to come down after that. And then we'll make that turn up with the fire out. 
And you know what? They did exactly what I asked them to do. And we put that fire out and, and we went down those stairs. Chief of the third battalion said, no, you, you didn't go down those stairs. I said, yeah, chief, we went down those stairs. He goes, no, you didn't. And I said, yeah, we absolutely 100%. Funny story about it. I mean, we were down in the cellar and the 18th battalion is going to put a line in the window. So I'm trying to get on the radio. You know, you know, how guys love the trucks. Yeah, listen, uh, can you order me a pizza? And it's yeah, coming yeah. the roof's open. I'm like, shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> and that's exactly what I said. I'm, I'm going into hell here, bro. <laughs> and and I, I know you're going to put a line in the window, and I'm like, they're going to fry us in here. I'm like, everybody shut the fuck up. So the chief pulls me aside when he got it. goes, hey, Timmy, did you have to swear on the radio like that? I go, well, you it got your attention, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, what, what, what do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you, know you should have said that kid. You should have said to the kid before you went down the stairs, right? You're going to get burned. You're going to get burned. <laughs> <your kid. laughs> yeah, that's, you know what? I should have said, you know, by the way, you're going to be roasted. That's it. You're going to get burned. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so, Tim, that whole time you were there, did you have a lot of the same bosses do around the same time? Or you were they rotating around or, you know? What, in 88? Yeah, just in the house. Like, I, mm -hmm. I always say all the time. Well, I was there a long time. There was three captains there when I was there. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm getting. You know, oh, great. Tommy Lapola ended up down in the, in the 8th Battalion. Richie Kirshner, a 40-year guy. And that, that was the 18th Battalion. I'd be working. I'd look at the riding list. And, you know, I was pushing 29, you know, like 29, 30 years. And I'd look at the riding list. And I was like the junior guy working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. We had Principio, who just right. retired, who had yep, 40. Yep. You had Mikey Scotto. Scotto. We're going to have him had, on. Uh, and, you, you know, you had um, Billy Donlin. Who's got 38 years? You had Whitey down in 56 truck, you know, who had, and you had Billy Kearns down in 56 truck, and then you had Joe Huber next to me with 38 years. I mean, I'm looking, at, I got 29 years, and I'm a junior yeah, guy yeah, yeah. working. Wow, that's you know, what, that's what time, I did too. That's it was like I the think. Bermuda Triangle. You went there, you, you no one ever saw you again because right. you never left. But that's that that to me is what keeps the houses, you know, the tradition. Obviously, also it, it keeps things good with the Chiefs because they trust, you know, they know who they can trust when you show up yeah. or after they see you. They see the same guys over and over again. They know, and that it's good for the house as opposed to boss. Yeah. You know, again, if you if you're moving up, you're moving up. There's nothing you, you know you can do about that. But when you when they have bosses that stay in the right. house for a long time, I think it really solidifies the place and it just you know, keeps the tradition going long. Yeah. And the captains loved me because I took all the probies. I wanted the probies. Yeah, yeah, good. You know, I wanted them. And, and to me, you know, as a guy mm. with some time, it kind of invigorated me. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, every time I got a new probie, new it was blood, like, oh, I, it's new blood. I'm back in the job. And we were Start out over, right? Start all over the time. Over. You know, you know, I remember we're going into a vacant building to throw some water one day. And I'm walking, I look in this room and there's a homeless guy taking a freaking Stanley steamer. I'm like, hey, don't mind us. We're just going to throw some water upstairs. You know, and... Uh, you know, that's what we did. You know, and I used to tell the Chiefs, I got to go out of service. If you want me to train these guys, there's no way I can stretch holes and really do what I need to do. And uh, that's why the engine tactical was so good, because you could take a company out of service, go down a rock and, right, right, right. and do that. You and know? really practice, right? I yeah. And really, really. And, you know, the engine tactical was great because the way we did it was there was an officer and then two firemen. And the officer would mirror the officer and a, 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 a chauffeur would mirror the chauffeur. And then a fireman would mirror the stretch. And they, and we just give them a serum. We tell them, listen, if something goes wrong, it's on you. We, we're not, you know, like, like so many other things, they're going to hook it. We're not going to do that. You know, whatever you do, it, it's going to be, and then we'll get together and talk about it. And, and to be honest with you, when we, when we were doing the engine tactical, most of the companies we had down there, and this is rare for the rock when they were done and we talked, they'd ask, can we do it again? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Most of the engines we had come down there go, do you mind if we do it again? And we're like, absolutely not. I'm here all day. Do it again. You know, because it was that, you know, like most guys, when they went to the rock, you know, when you got the ticket to go to rock, you got to say, another waste of, right? Yeah, I'm going to miss a fire. Waste your time, right? right nothing. Right, right. And, you know, the, the engine tackle was if you went down there and gave them something, they didn't feel like it was a waste of their time. And I think that's what most companies felt, that it wasn't a waste of time, along with the water, the, you know, the water management and the water loss trip, you know? So. Well, you can you can teach you can teach those things, bro. When you know you are uh, the magua de agua, you know what I mean. That's, uh, that's right up your alley. Magua is wizard, by the way. Oh! oh. oh. If somebody in the chat wants to know about the time you flooded the firehouse basement for a drill. <laughs> that's a true story. So you know, I had a probie, and I'm like, ah, I got to flow some water. I'm like, I'm looking in the basement. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? What's the big deal? So uh, I go down to the basement. I says, you know, the oil burner. I'll just throw it in the oil burner pit. So I'm flowing water in the basement, and I go upstairs, and there's no lights. 
like, what the fuck happened up here? And uh, we shorted out the entire fucking firehouse. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I I couldn't do that anymore. I used to smoke. We bought a smoke machine. So we used to smoke out the second floor and then we had a run. And then we're we're at the run and we hear a a run to Belmont 182. You left the machine on. (laughs) Yeah, we left the machine. We threw and uh, we smoked it. Hey, we got fire. No, it's it's our smoke machine, Chief. Relax. You know? You know? But, uh, you know, a lot of stuff like, you know, funny story, you know, like, so, you know, everybody, everybody, like when they talk on the radio, you know, like screamers, we had a chief in the seventh that was a screamer. Right. And he always screamed. He told me one at a fire one night, I'm going to rip your cock off. And I told him, listen, take something else. I need that. You know, <laughs> so, so, you you know, you never want to be that guy. Right. We all know each other. You know what I mean? So I talk like Eeyore on the radio, you know, whenever I go to anything. So yeah. we get a box one morning and we're going to, and you know, I got a, you know, he's a professional, but I always say, you know, I got one son that's a professional fireman. And I got one son that's a professional asshole and that's my younger son. Now he's going to be a professional fireman. So I go to this run and uh, you know, it's for a fire. I turn the corner and, and uh, it's a job. So I pick up the radio. I'm like, Eeyore. I go, yeah, it to the Bronx. Remember Sulker? There's Timmy Klett. You know, like that. <laughs> so, so I pick up the radio. I go, 88 to the Bronx, and they're excited because they're getting all the calls. So I go, yeah, 1075, fire's on the first floor. So 10 o'clock in the morning, my son calls me, and he says, hey, Dad, how was that job this morning? Because he used to listen on his phone when I was working. I go, you were awake at 630 in the morning because he usually sleeps till noon. You know? So I go, you were awake at 630 in the morning? He goes, yeah, Dad, I heard the box go out. I go, did you hear me give the 1075? He says, yeah, speak up. You sound like a pussy. He is an, this, the same kid, the same kid um, up in the valleys in Montgomery, um, not too long ago, last July, really. Um, he wakes me up in the morning. He goes, hey, Coldenham's going for a fire. And I was in the valleys with him. And so we go to the firehouse and a couple of the Bobby Presser was there. He shows up. A couple of the guys show up and they get a confirmed entrapment. So we get to the fire and, you know, we get into this place and we're trying to find a guy. And I, I see the bedroom. I head for the bedroom. I can't find the guy at all. I'm looking for him. I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? My son finds him, finds him in a closet. He pushes the door open, can't get, reaches in and he finds the guy. And uh, so the other guy helps him drag him out. So after the fire, I'm telling everybody, I'm going, yeah, I missed the guy. I, 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 I missed him. My son found him and he puts his arm around me. He goes, yeah, dad, maybe you should stick that at engine shit. Coming out shooting. Hey, your other son's down in Baltimore, man. They do some yes. work down here, bro. My yeah. son is in Baltimore, Daniel. He's actually in that 14 engine. Um, I gotta give those guys a shout out. Great place. Uh God bless John uh McMasters. He's in, in the hospital now getting uh skin graft right now. Um they decided to finally graft him. He was burned. You know, I saw him last week when I was up there, and uh, he's burned everywhere. I don't know why he wasn't in the hospital, but they're back in the hospital now, skin grafting. But uh, those guys, they do a shitload of fires. A oh, shitload yeah, of yeah. fires. You what know, and like, uh, uh, what was it like when you when you heard it was guys from that, from that <laughs> place? I remember talking to you about that. I wanted to relay yeah. that. Uh, so I was doing. You know, I teach a lot. On a, I'm I'm, on, I'm one of those circuiteer guys, and. Uh, I was in uh, Kentucky doing a class and I was in Louisville coming back and my son put me on this group. So when, when, when they get a fire, I can see what, so who's going to the fire. Now I didn't know if he was working, but I'm listening to it. When I hear 14, give the, give, they got a fire. I hear him say there's a collapse. I hear him say the 14 trapped. I hear him say that they, that, you know, they're calling 14. Now I don't know if my son's working. And uh, nobody's answering. Then I hear him saying that they're digging the nozzle firefighter from 14 engine now. So to put it in perspective, that's he's got a two. It's a two out of eight chance of it being him. You know wow. what I mean? That's so that's pretty high. Bro. Almost 25 percent. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm entertaining some real, real bad thoughts. I mean, like horrible, horrible thoughts. I can't get a hold of him. He's not answering his phone. He's not texting me. Any of that stuff. But I finally get a hold of me and he's heading down to he's going to the fire to help help down there. And, and uh it was great, you know, and um, and we talked. And one thing I, I'd really like to say is is when shit like that happens, you know, all you guys that want to get on your keyboards and sit there and second guess, you know what? And I, 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 as bluntly as I can say, keep your fucking mouth shut. I'm sorry. 
you know what? There's plenty of time to look and learn from shit that happens. You weren't there and you got nothing to say. You know what I mean? It's too much of that in the fire service now with guys that have never been to a fire that want to look at a picture and say, this is what I would have done. And, and, it, and it's, it's rampant. It needs to stop. It really does. You know, you know, guys get killed because they do what they do. Guys get killed because they were told there was somebody in there and that's, Hey, ready? That's what men do. You know, right, they, they, I'm not do. To, that is what men do. When people, when they say, Hey, there's someone in there, you put everything else aside you know, you tuck those balls in your up into the back and you get in there and you do your fucking job. And that's what they were doing. And if anybody wants to question that, you know, I'll give you my phone number. Call me up tomorrow. You know, I hate to say that, but that's what they were doing. You know, and they do it every yeah. day. My son in Baltimore is getting the second highest medal they give for pulling a guy that was burned over 70 percent of his body out of a vacant building. You know, I mean, come on. Wow. So that's it. I'm not going to I'm off my soapbox. All right. Apologize. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's all right. All right. Oh, fair I enough. I mean, no. that's why, like, when we had the Bronx fire, we 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 talked about it. It happened over that yeah. weekend, and we had the show on the Monday. Uh, we kept reiterating, this is not us Monday evening at that point quarterbacking. It's just us talking about what a job it was and the type of building it was, and looking whatever footage that we had. Well, it, most, you know? So, so 88 was the third to engine 88 at first water, you know, they ended up getting really the first one on a fire because, because of the situation there. And I'm not saying anything about the other companies. They, they were all those companies up there, like 48 and 56, that place, hands down, one of the great, I love that place. Uh, I mean, and thank God the divisions there. Cause they really keep the division in line. I mean, like, you know, they have, they've had the division chief come down in their kitchen and go, I don't know what I did wrong, but I'm sorry because they, they keep those guys in line. Uh, Great, you know, best fireman in the world in that place. And same thing with 88, 38, same thing with all those companies. And and I tell, I told guys there, you know, and actually they, they put some companies in, they asked me about the unit and um, any, uh, most other places, if that fire happens there, there's 40 people dead, not 19, not 17, you know, mo you know, because those guys, you know, are the way they are, you put that fire anywhere else, there's a lot more people dead. You know, and, you know, but firemen don't look at it that way. You know, one is, is too much, you know, so when it's 17, it's hard for, remember, we had the 14 people on Prospect Avenue. The guy that had the nozzle in 88 the other day at that fire had the mm -hmm. nozzle when the 14 oh, people shit. were killed on oh, Prospect Avenue. Oh, shit, wow. really? <clears throat> wow. Yep. wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. got Jimmy wow. Murphy, right? Real good nozzle man. Real, real good nozzle man. You know, it's just, it's the roll of the dice. It's, but it's what we do. And we, you know what? Yeah. We get up, we brush ourselves off. And tomorrow we'll get back on that fire truck and we do it again. Simple as that. Hmm. Sorry. You got me in a soapbox. Stop it. I want to Oh, go good. It's good. Oh, Listen, know, I said, People I had posted something very similar to what you just said, because I, I, to me, what bothers me the most is people get to say what they want. They could type something in and there's no ramification for what you say, right? No. Without knowing any facts at all. Without, no. you know, being, like you said, exactly. So Sign your name to it. Put your right. name on it. Well, Not some stupid screen name. Put your name on it. That's the all. The thing is, is if you don't have, if it's way too early way. for any of that stuff, right? I mean, listen, yep. we could, we could, down the road, after we pay respects to the people, then we find out through the reports and what we have through facts then we try and make it, but we try to learn something so that they don't die in vain. And you know right? what? They yeah. are. They are going to learn. I actually, I know the guy that's heading the investigation for the for for Baltimore, and they are going to learn from that. They are. There's no way you don't learn from that. But you know, for some guy on the outside to to judge what they did, and that's no, what man. that's what those guys do, and they do it as good as anybody in the world. No doubt. You know those guys. You know those guys. Eight and ten. 14, 55, and 23, all those companies over there on the west side of Baltimore, those guys, and I know a lot of them very, very well, and, you know, I, I became really good friends with them in the last couple of days because I was out with those guys. The bosses are great. The firemen are great. And, listen, I, I would go to a fire, with, a fire with those guys any day of the week, those guys. I saw the picture yeah. of what that building looked like before when they were stretching, you know, flaking yeah. the line out. Yeah, there ain't too many people who are going in there. You know what I'm no, saying? But that's what they do. But that's what that's, I'm saying. Those are the guys that are going to type, yeah. you know, uh, whatever they're going to type. So actually the guy that's doing the investigation, I had dinner with him when I was up there and he is doing the Baltimore investigation, 100%. And he asked me, Timmy, what would you have done? And you know what I said to him? I'm not answering that question. 
I'm just not. It's it does have any bearing on that anything. What I would have done has right. no bearing whatsoever. I'm not a, and that's how people should look at it. I'm not going to broach that subject because I have no bearing on it. I think that's the biggest cancer. I mean, besides the internet itself. Oh that's yeah. The biggest cancer <laughs> in the fire services. Yep. Every time you know we've been doing this for almost two years, and there's been a few times where I had to basically say something and delete it or. Just basically say we're not going to do this on here. You could there's plenty of avenues to do that stuff somewhere else, but we're not going to do that with us. So, so I just saw a, a a quote in the super chat. Ray Seely said it, it eliminates the punch in the mouth, and I I think that's a really the internet, yeah. well, <laughs> that's you know what? True. If you if you have if you're so passionate about your opinion, drive to Baltimore, knock on eight and ten or yeah, fourteen. Yeah. Tell them what you think, and tell them, tell what, them what, you think. what you think. Right? You know, you'll be yeah. spitting chiclets in a week. I mean, come on, you know, like. Don't, you know, stop. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, there he is. No, like you said, there's nothing, there's no, no, there's no uh, ramification. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, yeah. you know, so. Awful. Anyway, I did want to talk about why I know it's getting late. I've been on, I've been rambling you're on. Good, you're good. You're good. But I did want to, I did want to cover one thing, you know, that rewrite of the engine manual that yes. we did. Um, Cause it's important because it was a long time coming. Um, there was a lot of people involved in, and a lot of people, long time, Andy Fredericks, I'm sure you heard that name. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Involved with the Andy Fredericks training days down in Alexandria. Uh, a great group of guys. They do a lot of good. They donate all that money and put kids through college. Um, so you know, he's part of that. He was one of he was the last guy to really take a look at engine stuff. But we put a great group of guys together. Uh, uh, and you know, I was really proud to be part of it uh, before I retired. Um and you know, um John Galan, I don't know if you know John Galan. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mark Merrill, you know, Mark Merrill. You know, Mark Merrill, um, to me, you know, probably the, the most knowledgeable chauffeur I've ever met. I mean, he really, really knew. So when we were doing the whole pro pressure government, John's still in 255, isn't he? He's in still 255. Holy yeah. shit. God he, he was in my pro <laughs> class. He's been there his whole career. I don't know. I, think I went to show for, I forget where I, how I, where I, I, I think I went to yeah. show for school with him or something, or lieutenant, yeah. maybe I forget. Yeah, that's how I yeah. met him. Canali from 58 Engine. You mentioned him. Yeah, yeah. he was in that group. Um, John Galan, uh, Dougie Mitchell was there. Um, uh, I Matt like John. Quinn. Good guy, man. Uh, uh, Frank Rashiano was the chief, and, and you know, Ray McCormick was the um, was the chair. And unfortunately, uh, they ended up retiring him um, early on in in that rewrite. Um, and he would have been a great resource you know, later on. We met three or four times before we retired, uh, and we met you know 15 to 20 times afterwards the, the rewrite, but. Um, it was a long time coming for that rewrite, and I'm and, and it's one of the things I'm most proud of. And I, and I was involved in a lot of stuff on that job, you know, from from Memorial Day, and I did a lot of stuff with the Ronaldson golf outing. But being involved in that rewrite was probably one of the most proudest things I was because we had a lot of discussion about a lot of stuff. Um, um, Inches recorded stores, I mean, is a big deal, and not not commercial buildings, but stores and on the first floor of tenements, and, and that's a big deal. That's a big change. Um, uh, on some of the pressures. And, uh, so I was real proud of that. It was a great group of guys. And Frank Lieb said, he goes, you know, it was murderer's row of engine guys. Uh-huh. I put myself on that. But, you know, those other guys were were really, really good. You know, so, you know, I, I had to give those guys a real, real, real shout out for, for that. So it was, it was, uh, it was a long time coming. It really was. Um, two and a half years it took you, right? Two and a half years. When did it finish? Wow. Huh? When did it finish? We finished November of 2002, 2020. Probably when we finally, it, it, we, we finished with it, but then it had to go to legal. It had to go to staff. And, you know, they called me and some I of the things I didn't changed. even know that. I didn't know. We've talked about it's that. It's got to go I legal. Always... And you know where else it goes? The unions. No shit. Got to go to the the unions. Well, because if I had said, okay, from now on, the officer carries this standpipe kit, the unions are going to say, fuck, they're not. You know, but in 69, the officer carried the standpipe kit because then he chose the outlet. You know, when I dropped the kit, that's where I want you to hook up. So it made sense. So, but it goes to the union, goes to legal, and it goes to staff. And some things staff didn't agree with. There is a Brooklyn touch to it, though. Go ahead. Here it comes. Mark, no, no, there really was. So oh, okay. first, second, third do, right? First, second, third do. And Mark Merrill and John Galan were both were like, we want to make it first, second, third to arrive. Ah, you know I mean? yeah. 
So you can race each other in or slow yeah. down three laps like a loop. You know, that's what I used to say. I used to look at Mark and go, you're kidding me, right? But it, it did make sense, though, <clears throat> yeah. you know, when you're responding out of sequence. So I don't know if that stayed. And some of the pressures, I think, staff changed back. So if you get a three-story mixed occupancy in a store on the first floor, it's inch and three quarter now? If you want. You can still take a two and a half. No, no, of course, of course. But But, but the option is there. Where before we Amen. used to have, we, we told Amen. guys, we asked them, <laughs> why wouldn't you take an inch and three quarter to a store on the first floor of a, of a because tenement? It was a, because it, that's what they, you know, they changed Because they were more them. afraid of the chief than they yeah. were of the fire. Mm. That's what it was. Amen. You know, that's, that's what it was, you know. So we, that was one of the big changes, and uh, it stuck, I'm pretty sure. So Beautiful. But Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, 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 no wonder you got the name, you know, uh, the Sultan of the Stamp Pipe. I mean, it's, it's a real, uh, <laughs> no, what was the H two O? I didn't, you know, bro of H two O, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, the hammer of the hydrant. Okay, the hammer of the hydrant. The oh, hammer. Of, ah, see, I missed one. I could have came up with another one. <laughs> I like the Sultan of the Stamp Pipe. That's what was the, other one? <laughs> the bro of H two O. The bro. <laughs> I worked hard in that the short time that I had, man. I had a couple more. I don't want to make it too long-winded, though, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I always used to laugh. The truck guys, the guy Joe Maggi in 28 Truck, I used to argue with him all the time. And, and you guys, anybody who was ever in an engine, they'll realize this. So the truck would go in, they would come out, and they would always grab the nozzle, and they would say, hey, it's the last room on the right. So you go in, and it was always the first room on the right. It was just the last room they got to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's true. So we're, we're at the Hilton one night, and I'm talking to Joe Maggi, and we're talking about this. You know, I'm like, oh, you fucking guys. So that morning, we go to a real good job. It's not like five windows on the third floor. I got the nozzle. I get to the door, and Joe comes crawling out. I goes, Timmy, really? It's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. And I looked at him, I go, are you fucking sure? I mean, you're sure. Uh, Just look at the whole thing. That's it's serious, great. man. <laughs> nice. All right, Pete, is it that time, brother? Oh, yes, sir. It's time for the old school tip of the day. Day. Don't get day. All right, there he is. is. Yeah, don't get married. <laughs> Sorry. Thank <laughs> you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the old school tip of the day. <laughs> no, nope. just kidding. So, uh, a couple of uh, one thing I, I wrote something years back. For a magazine I was writing for, uh, call, I call it the four ups. And this is for the probies. Uh, the four ups would be an upbeat probie. Um, and, and it's uh, it's step up, listen up, clean up, and shut up. You know what I mean? And, and each one of those I wrote something for about, you know, step up, be involved in your company. Uh, you know, be the first one up at the table. You know, keep your mouth shut and, and, and learn. Listen to what those guys have to say because everything those senior guys say, it's knowledge. It's something. It, it's your history. And, and someday you're going to be the guy that's passing that thing on. You know, that's for the probies. And, and the other thing for everybody is, you know, be a student of the game. And, uh, you know, I, I'll go all the way back to that fire that defined who I was. And I, I promised myself that day that I would never, I would never lose again. I would never be that guy again. That would never happen to me. And, and every day, every, every incident I went to, every fire I went to, I learned something. And, and that's what I would tell you guys, you know, everything you go to learn something, you know, take one thing away from it, take two things away from it. Right. Um, and, and then later on, you, you'll have all this information. And the next thing you know, you'll be passing on because I tell guys, you don't know what you know until you need it, till you use it. You know, all these little tips, just sit and listen. And this is a quick story. Uh, when I was a fireman in Harlem, we had the rows of the tenements and, and this guy, um, you know, they called him the cat, but he, he would say, he goes, listen, when we always turn the corner, I never looked down the street. I always looked up. I always looked above the buildings um, to see what was going on because, you know, if it was in the rear, you wouldn't see it. So I'm a lieutenant now and I, we turn the corner and I, I'm looking up and I can see we have a fire and I, I give the 1075 and everybody says, what did you see? And I said, well, I don't know. I always, I always look up. When I turn the corner to see what's going on, if I can pick pick up anything. And it was just one little conversation I had with a senior guy when I was a young fireman. And that's what I would tell guys. Be a student of the game. Learn something every single day because you never, ever, ever don't want to be good enough. Right? Learn something every day. And at the end of the day, you'll be the guy 
heading stuff down. And, and that's that old school tip of the day. Just keep learning because the fire has a funny way of showing you that, you know, the minute you think you've got it figured out, the funny's got a, the fire's got a funny way of showing you that you actually really don't. So keep learning every day, learn as much as you can and be the best you can be. And you operate a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. And that's it. Great job. And don't get married. And that's don't get married. <laughs> and, you know, no, don't have a kid that's going to break your balls. That's, oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. a kid and breaking balls is synonymous. Come on. I mean, uh, oh, Lou, great show. Thank you. It was good. I had, you know what? You know, Lou, I had a lot of fun. I was, I, and I was, you know, I'm not going to lie. I was petrified. You know, thank God for alcohol. Right. <laughs> but, it's, you know, it's a little, little lube, lubrication. He kept, oh, saying, yeah, yeah. He kept oh. saying in the beginning, how did you talk me into this? How did you talk me into this? <laughs> well, I told, we told you I how fast it, it would go, though, right? It, it, it did go fast, fast, didn't it? No, it dragged on. It's painful. It's like a lifetime. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to go, I gotta go change my Depends right now. And by the way, Pete, there was none of those sound effects that you told me I'd have. You know, oh, I put them in there. There was no booze. I was hoping for a boo. Because he's got a shitty boo. That's why. He He really does have a shitty boo. He didn't like my boo. Hold on. No. No. No? No. That's what I hear from my bedroom window when I'm having sex. (laughs) (laughs) How about this one? Do you like this one? I was like some fucking commie gobbledygook. <laughs> I like that. Sounds like some commie that, gobbledygook. That sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> yep. What a, what a chicken dinner. Fucking shine back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, thank you, man. It was great. I really enjoyed it. I really did. Thanks for We'll have you back, kid. We'll have you back. We're going to get an engine uh, night, maybe. We'll have a bunch of... Uh, oh, yeah. We've got to do a show on engine water. Yeah. You guys you guys in a truck and a squad aren't going to be scared if we do an engine night, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know no, I told the chief one night I would have got the medal, but I had to stop and help the truck guys up over the curb. I know. I know. Oh, <laughs> hey. I you know where they got holes in the roof, right? So they can see the real firemen doing their job. Oh, oh my God! He's got a. He'll be here all He's night. He's gonna be here all night, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Keep your waitresses too, okay? Shots fired! Shots so fired! If we if we have an engine an engine show, we definitely have to have the Wizard of Water or the uh, Magua, oh. the Agua. Yeah. What's the other one? The, the Bro of the what? The Bro, the bro of, of H2O. H2O. I love that one. That's Write it down. You know what? I got it written down right here. Coops, kudos, because I yeah, love the bro of you. H2O. The bro. All right, Pete, what do you, you know, got? Rookie. Funny when I, when, real quick, when I saw, <coughs> when I did this, when you posted that picture, my phone blew up. And my wife goes, who's that? I go, it's the sound of someone breaking my balls. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your phone's going to blow up now, too. <laughs> Guys, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, Listen, thank hang, you. With us, hang with us through the end here, and then we'll take you backstage when we're done. 10-4. Who's got shout outs? I got nothing. Well, oh, I got one, right? Pete? I got one. You one shout out? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, go, you, you know what? I'm involved in this group, Fire Replicas. If you like the Fire Replicas, the New York City stuff uh, on Facebook, there's a Fire Replica. Uh, guys are great. They do raffles once a week uh, for Fire Replicas. You go to Fire Replicas on the Facebook uh, nice. um, pages. Buy and sell. Yep. It's great. It's a real great group and uh, real cheap. You can get actually. Real good uh, New York City fire truck models. Um, oh. at, yeah, it's real. It's a great group. I'm gonna go on that fire. Let me write that down. Fire replicas. Yeah, I'm a buff. Just, right. Hey, just fire just tell them I told you because I get five dollars for it. No. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, shalom. Shalom. Nice. It's all about the all right, right, that's yeah. it. I'm good, bro. So okay, oh, excellent. Sweet. So what do we got here? Uh, tell them what this is all about. The seven one eight all access. Oh, listen. I was trying to get an, uh, my leases up, so it is a pain in the ass right now. They got you over barrel, bro. They're charging twenty thousand dollars over sticker price. I found this girl; she's great. She will search do all the legwork for you if you look at a lease or buy a car, brothers. If you're in the New York tri-state area, uh, look, uh, get this address here or this number, Jen. She's great. She does all the work. She does the insurance work, the registration, everything. She'll find you the best deal. So I always like to try to pass on stuff to the brothers. Because uh, it's really it's a scam right now what they got going on, bro. What they're charging for cars, so certainly is. That's all I got, and uh, we're off on Monday because it is Saint Valentine's Day. Give your yeah. girl a kiss, and we're back on Thursday with uh, Chief Vinny Dunn. Uh, I was talking to Ruffy, and I was talking talking to Chief Dunn. His his career is so all encompassing and so big. I think we're gonna break it up into two episodes, so we'll have him on. 
for one episode, and we'll see what he wants to talk about for the first one, and then we'll have him on for a second show because he's just he sent me so much information. You know, uh, <clears throat> I want to get to most he, of it. He's and, the man. <clears throat> no, Timothy J. Clett, you're the man. Yes, no, I'm not, not even close. <clears throat> he's the man. I saw him speak 25 years ago, 30 years ago. I saw him speak. Is that he's incredible? The man. Yep. All right. Yeah, that's it. So on. that's Thursday. Come see us this uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We will be at the Nassau Coliseum if you want to come hang. We'll be there. Maybe having a cocktail. I'll come empty handed. Yeah, bring some with you. you know, yeah, right. Bring, bring, bring your hot old lady. You know what I mean? Yeah, bring your Whatever. hot old lady. That's the yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. Get the booze. You got come booze. see Mike Milner. Huh? He'll bring some lox and bagels. And maybe Oy. he'll bring uh, some, uh, you know, some gevelta fish. I don't know what he's going to bring. Something. Oy. Oy. What? But, nice. All right, all right. That's all I got, Pete. All right, boys uh, and girls. Uh, okay. So if you want to listen to this podcast, head over to the audio only version on iTunes Podcast, Spotify, uh, or wherever fine audio podcasts are found. We can we're on all the players, so just search us out. Also, guys, youtube.com forward slash getting salty experience is where we are right now. Hit that like, subscribe, and share button. We don't grow. We don't get to put out more info without you guys uh, doing that. Instagram, guys, we're at Salty Dog Inc. Lots of photos. It's awesome. Getting saltyapparel.com. That's where we have all the other great <clears> stuff. <throat> your T-shirts, your, your apparel, your accessories. Uh, Super Chat, thank you for everyone who hit us up there. Uh, we really, really appreciate that, you guys. It's been a wonderful run with that. Uh, Facebook, guys, Getting Salty Fans page now, over 32,000 members strong. Uh, the other 10,000 members that are on uh, the Facebook page, why don't you hit the like, subscribe, and share <laughs> button Do here. me a favor, for Christ's sake. How about that, you mofos? Come on. Now, why are you talking about it, Pete? I know a lot of guys listen to the audio. Do us a big favor. Just go over to the YouTube and just hit subscribe for us, bro. Yeah, if you free. already listened to us, help us out. It's free. It's free. Yeah. Thank you. Free, Thank, free, free. Thank you. Free, free. Thank free, you. Free, free, free. Also, guys, get in salty experience at gmail.com if you guys have questions for the show, for our Q&As, and for our uh, Cup of Joe and Fuego and Cockloffs and Cocktails. Uh, guys, email us. Your best helmet cam footage, your fire photos, your rig pictures, your your hot old ladies, everything to coopspodcast at gmail.com. All right. And awesome. that is all the news awesome. that is fit to print. Uh, man, tr Trucky117 wants to know if we're going to give away some free stuff, Ruffy. Free yeah, stuff. I'm going to ask his old lady. Oh, oh, no. I, you know what? I set you up because I had that written down. Keep lobbing them big uh, toes up, baby. I'll put them right out. No, yeah. baby. Yeah, that's a curveball, all right, right there. <laughs> that's a fire. That was a fire. That was, uh, that was hanging from a tree, man. I could have no, 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 hit that one out of the park. All right. <laughs> Lieutenant Dick. Timmy J. Clef, awesome. Clef. Got Great him. show. We Great got job, him. Brother. Yep. Uh, and hey, remember, buy a Taurus. Why a Clint Taurus? Why a Clint Taurus? That's, I think that's my favorite joke. Uh, that's yeah. great. Hey, All right, guys. It's, it's not a joke. It's true. It's nice true. work, LT. Hitting them out yeah. the park. Yeah, Very good. good job. All right, guys. We'll either see you at the show or we'll see you a week from tonight with Vinny Dunn. Stay low and go, yeah. guys. All right, everybody. We'll see you at the big one. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>